Welcome, everyone. Thanks. I'd like to call to order the 25th meeting of the 2014 <coughs> 2015 City Common Council. Uh, the clerk, please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. We cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about progress and prosperity for our community. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sakes and for our own. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1.3 is resignations. City Attorney. There's a letter from uh, Suzanne Schultz, who currently has power of attorney for her husband, Val Schultz, advising that due to uh, Val's health conditions, he's uh, <clears throat> resigning from the Police and Fire Commission as of March 26th. And there's a <clears throat> resignation to the mayor and members of the Harbor Center Business Improvement District. Tyler Ott is advising he's resigning his position as board member on the Harbor Center Business Improvement District as he's no longer to, able to attend meetings due to a change in employment, relocating him outside of the district. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file and thank those for their service. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item 1.4, council appointments. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for consideration. Jane Davis Wood, business owner, to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Tyler Ott, whose term expires 12-31-16, signed by the mayor. That will lie over till our next meeting. There is no confirmation of council appointments needed. Next, we'll go on to the public forum. Now, we've asked people uh, to sign up ahead of time, and the clerk will call them up. Right, this will be the public forum for the five people that have signed up previously for five minutes each. And I've got your names here. First one on the list is Dr. John Ravellis. Dr. Ravellis, are you here? Yes. And can you give us uh, your name and home address, please? Uh, John Ravellis at 1739 North 6th Street in Sheboygan. And you'll have five minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm here as the current chief of staff of Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center um, in support for the development of the Field of Dreams uh, land and the new soccer complex. I'm here with several hats. One is a resident of the current hospital. I live um, uh, just a few blocks down the street. Uh, I have nothing but positive things to say about the hospital and Aurora as a neighbor. Uh, they have been very uh, proactive, and we had some issues with ambulance noise when we first moved to town, and it was rectified uh, very quickly. Uh, it is also very convenient to have the hospital within the city limits uh, for our patients. Many of them use uh, taxi services for coming back and forth to the hospital. It's much easier to uh, get those services, much less expensive, as well as bus services and, and some of those things that would not be available outside the city limits. We are also the only inpatient psychiatric facility, which is very important to have in a community uh, to serve the city. That is very, very important. And so outpatient psychiatric services are, are just as important, and having presence within the city um, is, is very important. I'm also here as a parent of five daughters who all are involved in youth soccer and have been involved for their whole careers. My five-year-old is even playing now. Uh, and my 18-year-old is in high school but has, has developed through the youth program. 
We have used all the soccer fields in town. We go to multiple tournaments outside of town, uh, and it's a blessing that we have a facility, but those facilities, the Field of Dream project that was built, uh, is not an ideal facility. Anyone that has played there has seen uh, that any bit of rain, and I challenge any of you to go in your loafers there tonight uh, and see what kind of condition that field is in. Uh, it is not a well-drained uh, field. It is not optimal for field conditions. We have multiple games that are canceled and rescheduled since I've been in town in 2001 uh, in part of the soccer program. Uh, building a dedicated soccer field will not only be a great benefit to the youth, it'll encourage the growth of the soccer program. Our goal from the White House on down is to get kids more active and uh, to deal with um, childhood obesity and, and doing something that promotes that is, in my opinion, a no-brainer. Uh, these fields will also allow us to have our own tournaments. We go to multiple tournaments, stimulate many of the economies in the eastern part of Wisconsin. It'd be nice to get that in our backyard where we already have the infrastructure and hotels and tourism to host tournaments, and we cannot do that with the current uh, facilities that we have. So from a, the standpoint of a soccer parent, uh, I think uh, that the field proposal and the resources that Aurora is committing to our community uh, is an immense uh, benefit for everyone who has children, uh, grandchildren uh, who want to be active and in, in, in a safe environment. From a medical standpoint, healthcare continues to change. I am almost late for this meeting because I spent all day working in an antiquated facility uh, because we just don't have the room. Um, and you talk to uh, the, the patients, and even today I, I mentioned to several of my patients, why does my son have to go four floors down after his ear surgery? I tell them because we don't have the space. Uh, so we need a facility that can accommodate today's healthcare environment, but t tomorrow's healthcare environment as well. There is a lot of technology that continues to change, robotic surgery, things that we can't even fathom in having in this community because we don't have the, the physical space and ability to handle that. So a facility that's not only going to create revenue for building it, hiring more staff, but allow us to expand and to continue to attract physicians who will bring their kids to our community, who will use our fields and who will stimulate our economy and who will uh, be part of our community and continue to support various uh, fundraising op opportunities within our community. That's how we, you keep growing a good community is you, you build for the future that allows you to attract good physicians, allows you to provide good, good um, services to your patients and allows you to change with the, with the, with the future. Um, so I, I think that uh, this project is good in all accounts. It'll help our citizens to maintain a good and competitive health care environment. It'll help our youth to have facilities for both soccer and football that are dedicated and built for those purposes. And it'll be a huge benefit to the city from an economic standpoint, um, impacting it in a very positive way. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next on the list is David Gallinetti. Mr. Ga Mr. Gallinetti, is, are you here? Well, David's coming up. Uh, we have set up a conference room at the end of the hallway with the live feed of the uh, proceedings here. So if anybody's getting tired standing, please, please feel free to take care of that room and take advantage of that room. David, can I get your full name and home address, please? Certainly. David Gallinetti. <clears throat> 7.30 Broughton Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for this opportunity to talk to you tonight. I'm here uh, not only as a resident of the city of Sheboygan, but I'm here as president of the Sheboygan Area School District Board of Education. As elected officials, uh, we have to lead, and sometimes that means that we have to make decisions that we don't have community agreement over. Uh, the question of rezoning Field of Dreams is certainly one of those instances. No matter how you vote tonight, people in the community are going to be unhappy with the outcome. Uh, I shared this at a recent school board meeting, and I wanted to share it again tonight because it's, it's applicable. Sheboygan residents don't agree on this issue. Uh, there are some that are adamantly opposed to it, and they're always going to be. There are some that want more time to decide, although we haven't been able to come to any agreement on how much additional time we need to be able to reach a decision that everybody's going to be happy with. Some are strongly in favor of this, and they wonder why it's taken as long as it has. 
If you vote to rezone this property tonight, there are going to be people that are going to be unhappy. If you vote against rezoning the property tonight, there are people that are going to be unhappy. So who do you listen to? Whose advice do you take? I hope that we can agree uh, that we're partners in improving this community, and we want to be progressive, <laughs> and we want to move our community forward. I think we can all agree on that. The decision, uh, this decision requires us, I think, to look at the big picture, and it requires us to look at how this decision affects the whole community. The overwhelming majority of the people that I've spoken to since the school board approved selling the property have been in favor of this proposal for a number of different reasons, but I'm going to sum up the main ones. Why would they like this proposal? It benefits the whole community. It benefits the whole community. The proposal allows a large community employer, in this case Aurora, the opportunity to expand its health care services to provide more services to our community. It puts property back on the tax rolls. That's not getting talked about a lot, but this will put property back on the tax rolls. That benefits our community. Specifically, it benefits the city of Sheboygan. Recreational space will increase as a result of this proposal. That benefits our community. There's been some discussion in our community about destroying a park and about eliminating green space. Here's one important fact that you need to keep in mind tonight. This property is not a city park. It's not a city park. This is school district owned property that we had kept aside because we wanted to see whether or not we needed a new school on the west side of town. When we decided we didn't need to build on that property, we turned it into a recreational field and that's what it's been used for. It's not a city park. So it bears repeating, recreational green space in our community will increase as a result of this proposal. There are going to be recreational fields across the street on the east side that are going to replace some of the current fields on Field of Dreams. There will be uh, the Boots and Farm property that, of course, you're all familiar with is going to be co converted into a youth soccer complex. Aurora is going to pay for both of these projects to happen. That was part of the agreement to purchase the property in the first place. We never would have sold Field of Dreams to Aurora, much less anyone, without the agreement that they replicate those fields somewhere else in town to provide children with that opportunity, to provide our community with that opportunity. The current fields won't be touched until those new fields are fully functional and operational. So children aren't going to lose any minute of playing time. I appreciate your time and I appreciate your effort. I truly understand the position that you're in tonight. Trust me, I understand it. The school board voted to sell this property because we believe this project benefits the whole community. And in the spirit of partnership in moving our community forward, I think it deserves your support tonight as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Next on the list is Scott Lewandowski. Uh, can I have your full name and address, Scott? Okay, Scott Lewandowski, 221 Erie Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank Alderman Bill Thiel for his re-election win last night. Tonight, you have an important vote as to what is in the best interest for the children of Sheboygan. Before you vote, consider these questions. Take a minute to actually think about them. Aurora, the Sheboygan Area School District, and city officials have made many promises as to what the children of Sheboygan will get. But how come none of these groups have guaranteed what is promised will actually be built in the time frame given? Number two, how much will it really cost to build everything that the children of Sheboygan have been promised in this deal? Aurora is only giving a certain amount, with the city responsible for anything over that amount. Why hasn't Aurora or the school district been giving the full amount to move and build everything they have promised to the children of Sheboygan? Does anyone here really believe that if this project for Aurora goes through, that it will cost the city of Sheboygan taxpayers $800,000 like it was guessed at by Alderman Hammond in a Sheboygan Press article on February 9th? The city and all government agencies always underestimate what something will actually cost and overestimate what the benefits will be. The field east of the Field of Dreams has contaminated land on the south end. Aurora is not paying to clean it up. 
And when I was on the school board, the school district said the city would be responsible for cleaning it up because the contamination was from the city dumping on the property. How much will this cost the city if the Field of Dreams is rezoned? And how long will it take before construction can start on replacing part of the current Field of Dreams in a new area if the contaminated soil has to be dealt with first? Also, how many of you are familiar with Joplin, Missouri on May 22, 2011? And prior Oklahoma, April 28, 1942. Both of these two cities had two hospitals within a block of each other. Both had both hospitals destroyed in a tornado to the point where they could not be used and had to be torn down. There are probably more, but there won't, these were the first two I came across on an internet search. Is it good to have two hospitals a block apart as Aurora wants? Sheboygan is also overdue for a tornado. On August 8, 1966, a minor tornado hit Sheboygan and one person was hurt. A tornado also hit Sheboygan on the 4th of July in 1873. Many buildings were damaged, including the courthouse. On August 20th, 1900, a tornado struck Sheboygan, and some of the damage that occurred was included blowing down the steeple of Bethlehem Church. In 1974, a tornado hit Howard's Grove, which resulted in people dying. On August 22nd, 1964, a tornado heavily damaged Port Washington, so it is possible for tornadoes to strike Sheboygan and destroy both hospitals if they are in a hospital corridor. For the best interest of Sheboygan, the field of dreams should be left as it is and not rezoned and Aurora should build somewhere else, preferably on the south side of Sheboygan, where people want a hospital and to better serve the southern part of the county, which is the fastest growing area of Sheboygan County, and where Aurora already owns land. Then it would truly be a win-win for the taxpayers and citizens of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. You were elected to do what is best for the citizens of Sheboygan and its future. The children of Sheboygan, you were not elected to sell out to Aurora. Finally, this is described as a win-win for everyone. Remember the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. And this is certainly sounding too good to be true. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Susie Patterson. Susie, are you here? <coughs> Susie, can I have your full name and home address, please? Here. Susan Patterson, 1502 South 12th Street. And you will have five minutes. Okay. I'm here as a South Side citizen. Um, obviously, a whole different look at it because it's not right in my backyard. But I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here. And I did a little of my own research just talking to family and friends about what they might think about this as an idea. And I had a hard time finding people who didn't think it was a positive win-win for everyone. So. A regional sports complex would be a benefit to our community, I believe, and after the many conversations I've had, I can't literally find a single person on the south side of town that is one of my customers that doesn't see it, that it would benefit us having the sports complex at the other end. So an added opportunity for the south side would be wonderful and greatly appreciated. More families would eat at our restaurants is an obvious benefit. Stay at our motels, shop at our stores, buy gas, and the list goes on. The added benefit of good paying jobs would be bring with it homes being purchased. Positive growth in our community. The new jobs are, would be high paying competitive jobs that provide incentive to live in Sheboygan and our restaurants again would benefit. I have fluctuated from between 12 and 20 employees over the years and we've been there 54 years as of February. So we've seen a lot of changes and growth in the community. The busier I am, the better off my employees are, and so goes the positive benefit to all of us. After some research I did of my own of communities that across the country that have similar sports complexes, we feel that a similar venue on the south side of Sheboygan would put us on the map with another demographic of people with the potential for huge added tourism dollars being spent in the community. Without the new Aurora facility, it would seem that the cost and possibility for a regional sports complex in the near future would be non-existent. So we are asking, as a restaurant, and, the, and the several of them that I've spoken with, 
have asked for your to support the proposal and thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. And lastly, we have Kristen Blanchard. Kristen, are you here? Oh, there you are. <laughs> You're going to have to pull the mic way down. I didn't mean that. <laughs> No, no, really, it's all right. I'm used to it by now. <laughs> she knows I didn't mean that. I, I know. Um, <laughs> Can so I get my your... address is 2136 Erie Avenue. My name is Kristen Blanchard. I should give you like 40 minutes for that one. Okay. <laughs> you have I really five don't have minutes. 40 minutes worth of stuff to say, so that's, that's all right. Um, Mayor, Alderpersons, uh, and community members that are here tonight, I'm uh, happy to speak um, as not only a city resident of Sheboygan, but as the CEO of Lakeshore Community Healthcare, and I'm here tonight not to say whether you should or shouldn't vote for this, but to tell you about the partnership that we have with Aurora and how important that partnership is and how important it is that Aurora is in, the city, in this city and what they've done for our community. And I'm going to start with the fact that, so everybody knows off the top of it, LCHC, the organization I work for, does receive funds from Aurora on, uh, as grants and through donations, and we have a great partnership. And so, and they continue to have that partnership with us. We are here today because of Aurora and St. Nicholas Hospital getting together with United Way and a number, other, a number of other organizations who realize that there's an issue to access to care for health care in this community. By Growing and building our healthcare community, we can grow and build that increased access. Aurora currently takes 60% of our medical patients for specialty care. They do this in discounted, they do this with discounted uh, prices for our patients because they are at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. This is really important as we build our organization and what we're doing. Aurora continues to be that partner, not only with us, but through, through things like the community conversation on mental health. And by providing and assisting us with increased access to inpatient and outpatient behavioral health services. There is an issue in our community, and if you look at our community health rankings that just came out again, our community is lacking providers and services it is really important that we continue to support both hospital systems, but tonight that we support Aurora in providing that access to care that's greatly needed in our community. I, it would be a deficit to our community for, and, and our city if Aurora decided to move out of the community. Again, the patients that we serve, and last year we served over 6,000 patients in the community, if those people didn't have the increased access to those specialty services, and again, by having Aurora in the city, the access to public transportation to get there, most of these individuals, again, are at or below 200% of the federal poverty level, we would not be able to provide those comprehensive services. So I want to thank Aurora for being a great partner to us, to other community members, and I would hope that the city and the, the, in the city and everybody in the city understands what a great partner we have here with Aurora and supports Aurora in whatever they do. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it for public forum. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to uh, mayor's announcements. First of all, I'd like to congratulate our Madam Clerk our new city attorney, and all the aldermen that were reelected, and also uh, aldermen, uh, or, or <coughs> aldermen to be, um, Eldon Berg and uh, Job Jose. Um, as we start the new council year, we need to set up some new committees, and all of you will find some documents on your desk, which is a survey of your preferences for your committee appointments. I'd appreciate it if you could get those uh, turned back to me in a week, so they're all back next Wednesday. And then I'd also like to thank our water department. Uh, you may have found a, a brochure like this in your water bill. If you haven't received it yet, it's coming soon. But we want everybody to kind of examine their recycling habits and make sure they're recycling uh, is, uh, everything that they can. Uh, the city has a new contract with our waste hauler, and uh, we pay nothing for recyclables. Before, we used to pay $22 a ton. So... 
anything we can get out of the garbage that shouldn't be there and get into the recycling side is going to save the city money in the future. So thank you very much for your help with that. Next, we'll move on to uh, public hearings. Um, 2.1 is a hearing scheduled this evening relative to the proposed amendment to the City of Sheboygan's Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map to change the land use classification in property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue from public parks and open space to institutional community facilities classification. <coughs> Alderman Hammond. Item 2.2 is a second hearing scheduled this evening to amend the City of Sheboygan <coughs> official zoning map to change the use district classification of the property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue from Class SR5 Suburban Residential to Class SO Suburban Office Classification. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I move to open the hearings for public comments under the following guidelines. Uh, uh, one that will combine the two <coughs> hearings since they're relative to the same project. Um, comments are limited to three minutes for each person speaking. Um, personal criticism of other individuals is out of order. Uh, the city council will receive citizen input during the hearing, but will not respond uh, during the uh, to uh, respond or debate during the public hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Uh, the city clerk has a list of the people that have previously signed up. She'll be calling those names, and she'll be calling who's on deck. And we'd like the on-deck person to take one of the chairs here so that we can keep this flowing. And then uh, after we get done with this, we'll see if there's anyone who hasn't had a chance yet and still would like to speak. Okay, the first three people I'd like would be Bob is up here already, and Deanna. Is it Deanna? Dina. Dina. Okay, if, Dina, if you want to take one of the chairs and also... Kathleen Renzelman. Okay, go ahead, Bob. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Robert Heck. I live at 1720 Elm Avenue, and I've come here tonight to urge all members of the Common Council to vote yes to rezone the Field of Dreams. Your yes vote tonight will complete step two of a three-step approval process for the new $86 million Aurora Medical Facility. By voting yes tonight, you will move the process to the step three, which is the DNR approval. The DNR re approval requires that there be a plan in place that will guarantee and assure us that every th all the athletic fields that are on the current field of dreams will be replaced. This is a requirement that they have because they uh, donated money, $92,000, to the original Field of Dreams. So for those who are concerned that Aurora may not fulfill their obligations and replace those fields, the DNR approval is dependent upon it. Uh, I think we would all agree that there is an abundance of medical providers along Taylor Drive between Memorial Drive and Seaman Avenue. It has become the medical corridor in Sheboygan. Aurora would like to join that corridor with their new facility. And they're asking you to extend that corridor one more block from Seaman Avenue to Gilly Avenue. Their proposed facility is uh, in the same business that many of the other uh, facilities are in along that face Taylor Drive. Uh, there's all sorts of medical providers there, and Aurora's yet another medical provider, so it fits into the nature of the area. Uh, it is true that there is a definite residential presence also bordering the Field of Dreams, particularly around the north end, but um, it is not a distinctly residential area. It is a real mix of open space, uh, businesses directly to the south that are in the same business as Aurora, and I feel that the zoning is appropriate for that property. Um, if you vote no tonight, the project will stop. There won't be any more steps or approvals. A no vote tonight stops this project. And we will take this proposal, an $86 million facility, $200,000 a year in additional tax revenue, 30 new jobs, $2. million for the Sheboygan Area School District, $5 million to improve and upgrade 
uh, and replace athletic facilities and take all of that and we'll be throwing it in the trash can of missed opportunities. And I urge you tonight not to do that. I urge all of you to vote yes because a yes vote will move this project forward. It will provide better athletic and medical facilities for the citizens of this community for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Um, can I get Lori to come up here? Lori Nitt? Is it Nitt? You'll be the third. Go ahead. My name is Dina Grundle. I am currently employed at both Aurora Sheboygan Memorial and St. Nicholas Hospital. In my capacity at Aurora Sheboygan Memorial, I serve the community as the coordinator of sexual assault nursing services, otherwise known as the SANE coordinator. Simply put, I am a specialized forensic nurse that cares for adolescent and adult sexual assault victims. Sheboygan Memorial provides the only SANE program in Sheboygan County. Our dedicated caregivers provide first response care for victims of sexual assault in their time of acute trauma. We care for their emotional, physical, and, emo and medical needs as well as handle evidence collection when it is appropriate. Ultimately, we focus on preserving the victim's dignity and returning control over their life. Aurora has provided this service for more than seven years, guaranteeing 24-hour coverage for these patients. We would like to expand our program to include pediatric patients, eliminating their need to travel to Milwaukee for the care of these children. Along with several other community members, we are currently working on building a child advocacy center to provide a child-friendly setting um, with, with sensitive care. We are also working with the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department and the City of Sheboygan Police Department to start a human trafficking task force to help combat human trafficking and provide health care to these human trafficking victims. Sheboygan Memorial has also agreed to allow the purchase of a secure digital forensic camera system designed for investigations such as sexual assault, domestic violence, homicide, child abuse, and human trafficking. In order to grow these much needed services and to help these victims in the best way possible, we need to create more space at our hospital. With the approval of this proposed outpatient surgery and medical office building, we can relieve some stress of this hospital. By relocating some of the axillary departments and allowing growth for our inpatient and sensitive patient care needs, please, when you consider this project, understand that it is an investment into the future of Sheboygan and our ability to expand access to valuable health care. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to better explain Aurora's local commitment. Thank you. Um, can I have, <clears throat> is it Robert? Robert, looks like, yes. <laughs> I couldn't read the last name and I'm not going to take a shot at it. No. <laughs> and then Kathleen, you may yes. go ahead. My name is Kathleen Renzelman and my address is 2316 Wiedemeyer Street. I'm 69 years old and in my lifetime I have never done anything like this. I'm here this evening because I'm so passionate about saving the field of dreams. I am opposed to Aurora erecting their facility on the field of dreams at two levels. I believe that my emotional level is probably um, where I'm stronger because business acumen is not my forte, but I'm going to just go into it a little bit. Uh, and I don't even know if it's business, it's probably just questioning the the way it all unfolded. I do not feel comfortable with the pace at which this endeavor has proceeded. I think it's been rushed. And I feel comfortable when I have more time to make an informed decision. I just believe that haste makes waste. And once this is done, it cannot be undone. People are saying if we don't grasp this opportunity, it won't ever reappear. I don't know about that. Life is funny. It comes and goes, up and down. Things happen. Nobody can predict the future. How do we know that something won't happen where whatever is so prosperous for this city can flourish? It might. This much I know. You use that green space for something else, and that green space is gone, gone, gone. It's never coming back. That's the bigger level that I'm addressing this from. I have a reverence for green space. More so now, as I get older and have granddaughters. 
Also, nobody has mentioned the Jerry Homage aspect of this, the way it was intended at the outset. That's a very serious, solemn endeavor that was there. Just moving it doesn't necessarily modify what word do I want? It doesn't necessarily please me. Let's talk simply and plainly. It doesn't necessarily please me. It doesn't necessarily seem the correct thing to do. The intent is known to anyone who has examined this situation. The intent was for the field of dreams to remain as it was from the outset. To me, that's akin to holy ground. I hope I can persuade you somewhat tonight. I'm speaking from my heart and my mind. But listen to my heart harder than my mind, please. I beg you, please don't let this green space go. Somebody said we shouldn't settle for better when we can have the best. I say we have the best. Let's not lose it. Thank you, Kathleen. Next, can I... Could I please have um, Rob? Is it Rob Howe? Yeah, could I have you come on up? And Lori? Go ahead. I'm Lori Knett, uh, 17930 Miller Road. So I'm actually here on behalf, actually I'm an employee of Sheboygan Memorial, and I'm speaking um, and reading a letter from one of our co-workers that could not be here tonight. She's the mother of four children that have played sports. And she would like to say that the Field of Dreams is in very poor condition, and it has been for several years. My parents have been unable to attend various events at the field due to the unstable terrain, and when they have, they have had to watch their grandchildren from the car parked on the street to ensure that they do not fall. We've had multiple games canceled due to the amount of mud on the field due to poor drainage in the current site. Youth football is also near and dear to my heart. Not only did my boys grow up playing youth football, um, Don Kolath, the founder of Sheboygan Youth Football, is my father-in-law. I know the condition of the fields at Kiwanis Park at the keel that, that the kids have to play on. I know the hard work of hauling equipment and renting tents and painting field lines. I know the need to have a home, a place to take pride in. The soccer program has a home, but it could be better. The baseball softball program has a home, <coughs> but it's now time to, for Sheboygan Youth Football to be given the opportunity to ho have a home as well. In 2007, I purchased a, purchased a home a block and a half away from Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center. I can truly say that initially I was concerned about what it would be like to live next to the hospital. Even though this new facility will be an outpatient surgery facility, there will not be helicopters or ambulances coming to the facility. I'd like to say that the lack of noise by helicopters, ambulance, and traffic on my street has left me pleasantly surprised. Aurora is a good neighbor. The ambulances do not run their silence, sirens until they are farther away from the facility, and as for the helicopters, they blend in with the noises of life. As a side note, my family has decided from day one to pray when we hear the flight for life helicopter for the patient and the family of the individual being transported. Aurora will also be a good neighbor if given the opportunity to build on the field of dreams. As a GI tech at the hospital, I can attest that we need more space. Many of our patients have transportation issues, and have, having a centrally located medical facility will help meet that need as well. That's Catherine's letter. As, um, as myself, I would just like to briefly say I'm the mother of two grown sons that were raised in Sheboygan. Both are in their 20s. They are college graduates looking to start their families. They are looking for a community that with good jobs, good schools, good health care, and good recreational facilities. If we do not start building the dream of a better community for all, we'll become a dying community. Please look at the big picture. Please actually look and support the Aurora proposal. Thank you. Can I have um, Joel Wolfner and Robert? Or who is up? Yep. Thank you. You can go ahead, Robert. Hi. My name is Rob Howe. Uh, I live at 1340 North Avenue in Sheboygan. What's that? Hello. <laughs> um, I'm a longtime soccer coach in the community. I've been, I coached Sheboygan South High School in the 90s, um, coach currently coach for Lakeshore United Football Club, and I founded a skill master soccer camp. Um, the people that live at Taylor Drive have probably seen a lot of my face across the street from them. 
um, till 2010, we did most of our camps at Taylor Drive. Uh, I had up to 125 kids at the camp, uh, and the wear and tear horse man, we tried to keep off of it to save those fields. I had to move the camps to horse man in about 2011, 2012, because the conditions at Taylor Drive were becoming almost unplayable. Hard fields, difficult for um, the ball to roll cleanly. I was unable to do the things that I needed to do with the kids to really get them to the level and of play. And they weren't learning as much as they, they could learn if I had them at Horse Man where the fields were much better conditioned. The well, number of people touched on how wet the fields get, so I don't have to cover that one. The one thing I've not heard a lot of is the opportunities for the kids that could get lost if we don't go in this direction. Right now we do have good fields. Horse Man is in good shape. There's some pretty good fields. If we upgrade the way that this proposal suggests we do, we would have some of the top fields, if not the top fields in the state. We would be drawing in top clubs from all over the state. We'd be drawing in some top tournaments. That kind of exposure is where kids get their opportunity to play in college now. High school doesn't lead to college anymore. Uh, college coaches go to big tournaments. That's where they get exposed to players. That's where they see them, um, decide if they want them. They call them college showcases. If you have a tournament in a place like the facility that we're proposing, you bring in all these top teams. You bring in um, college coaches. They come and watch, and they frequently sign kids to letters of intent, intent at those tournaments or talk to the parents and whatever. depends on the time of year it is and the age of the kids. It provides an opportunity for the kids that we do not provide right now. Um, the ability to, to train or for the kids that want to train and be on the field a lot more than we currently have the ability for them would be a big one. Um, and another one that's not been mentioned at all, right now the adults, and there are, there's, a, um, I believe, a 20-team adult league in Sheboygan. Excuse me, Rob. You're three minutes. I'm sorry you're up. Thank you. Oh, they have an opportunity with more fields. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I get Trevor and Brian, Trevor Martin and Brian Sippel up here? And Joe, it's all yours. Thank you. <clears throat> There's been a lot of discussion about this development, um, both in the newspapers, um, on various media <laughs> outlets, and so forth. And rather than talk about a lot of the issues that we've already talked about, I want to talk about the facts, the things that we know that this development is about. The economic side is obvious. We have $200,000 of tax revenue from a property currently generating zero. I think the math is pretty simple there with regard to that matter. The sale will increase the tax base of this community by $10 million, allowing it to issue more bonds, more opportunities, more repairs, things that can get done as a result of that. This community from the medical side will gain a state-of-the-art facility. It will add 30 highly skilled jobs. It will add seven doctors. And the construction that goes with this project will create short-term construction jobs. It will create long-term service contracts, and maybe most importantly from an economic standpoint, this project and this development is a commitment from one of Sheboygan's largest and best employers. That's something to keep in mind. These are financial benefits for all of us, not a neighborhood, not a street, not a side of town. This isn't a north versus south side issue. This is a Sheboygan issue. In addition, we all know that part of this development involves the providing of $5 million for development. That's important. The notion that this project takes away anything is not the facts. The development will lead to a net 41 acres of additional recreational green space. I heard an earlier speaker tonight talk about how important green space is and how it should be revered. There's going to be 41 more of those acres to be revered as a result of this development. Butts and Farms out on the south side of Sheboygan is a tremendous opportunity. Are there challenges? You bet there are. There are going to be fundraising challenges. This project 
gets that project off the ground. <coughs> if we are talking about further developments from phase one, phase two never happens without this development going forward. We've heard some of these things be described as pipe dreams, fairy tales, fantasies. We're gaining 41 acres. That's a fact. That's not fantasy. And what I want to talk about at some level, too, is the Sheboygan Area School District established certain criteria. Those criteria were met. In fact, Joe Sheehan, in his letter to the community, said they were exceeded. There's no place in this debate for name-calling, predators, greedy, narrow-minded, any of those kinds of things. I don't want to talk about that stuff. Progress is a great buzzword. It really is. And while pro pro you know, progress is a great buzzword, the impetus and motivator for all of that is change. It's the only way progress ever occurs. Excuse me, Joe. Three minutes are up. Thank you. Thank you. Could I have um, Travis? Is Travis here? Could you come on up, too? And Trevor? It's all yours. Hi, my name is Trevor Martin. I'm here on behalf of the Northeast Wisconsin Construction and Building Trades Council and also Plumbers and Steamfers Local 400 uh, that represents the members that live in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, I support Aurora's proposal, inve proposal investment for an outpatient surgery center, a medical office building, and upgrades to the development of the youth sports facilities. This project will contribute to Sheboygan's economic growth and development. The new Aurora facility will bring good paying jobs to the community, provide the infrastructure needed to serve the long-term health needs of the residents of the city of Sheboygan, and is projected to generate an additional $200,000 annually in property tax revenue for the city of Sheboygan. Additionally, the Butson Farms, which will be built as a tournament level recreation facility, will serve as a regional sports destination and host teams and their families from other parts of the state. Visitors attending those sporting events will be here to uh, you know, prop up the local economy by spending money at restaurants, hotels, and all the other amenities the city of Sheboygan has to offer. This project is good news for workers with all the added construction jobs that they can benefit from, local businesses who will benefit from the new tourism dollars, and the residents who will see the city of Sheboygan's tax base grow. I encourage you to support this project and with the contributions to uh, the city of Sheboygan's long-term economic development. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Can I have um, Dane? Is Dane here? Dane, you wanna come on up? Brian, it's all your. Oh, hold on just a second. Let me stop this. Start the clock. It's all yours. My name is Brian Sipple. I live at uh, 1305 South 22nd Street in Sheboygan. I've been a resident here my entire life. I have a, a son and a daughter who have both played uh, baseball on the, the Field of Dreams. I'm not going to talk about the conditions of the Field of Dreams. Uh, I, I'm here representing the building trades and the Carpenters Union, Local 731 in the area. We have 50 carpenters that live in the city and another 100 that live in Sheboygan County. Um, unfortunately, our industry, it, we, we get rid of green space all the time. It's just it's part of our industry. Uh, everyone wants to use buildings. Everyone likes to have buildings, but uh, <coughs> the construction process is dirty. It's, it, it's not always favorable. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm in favor of the project. I think, I think it's very important. It's very important to our members. It's very important to the carpenters in the, in the area. We, we install the foundations, the footings, the framing. Uh, we, do the, we install the cabinets, the doors, the hardware, the drywall, uh, ceilings, flooring. It's very important to our membership. And uh, I, the, the members that I represent, that I've talked to, are, they're all in favor of the project as well. We have members that live around the Field of Dreams and that also use... Their, their sons and their daughters also use the Field of Dreams as well. They're in favor of, of upgraded facilities, um, better soccer fields, um, better baseball field, better baseball diamonds, football field. So um, I'm in favor of the project, and um, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Jeff, can I have Jeff uh, Welsh? Is Jeff here? Yep. <coughs> and Travis, right? Yes. Okay. Good evening. I'm Travis Martzel. I'm here on behalf of the Building Trades and the Operating Engineers Local 139. Um, we represent the skilled men and women uh, that build your roads. Some of our bigger products here, as long as my other friends are in the room, is Acuity, uh, Power Plant, obviously the restoration of Boston Store. And we'll have an opportunity to work on this particular store or um, hospital that's coming up and designing and um, executing the fields in a safe, uh, consistent, timely manner. 
Um, we have 200 members that I represent that live in, in and around the Sheboygan County. Um, definitely quite a few of them, especially our older retired members are looking forward to this project just due to the fact that they got some choice. They're not running down uh, to Milwaukee. They're not running over to uh, Green Bay, Appleton area. Okay. Uh, we support Aurora's proposal to build a new outpatient surgery center in the medical office building. The new facility will improve access to quality health care in uh, their community. As someone that represents residents uh, in this community and around it, it is important that quality health care is easy to access and is also that's close to home. This ensures that they can get the health services that they need to stay healthy uh, so that they can keep working and minimize any time spent away from their jobs. This new facility will provide much needed expanded access to care and ensure that uh, our, as a whole, growing community, community's health care needs will be met locally in the years to come. Please support this proposal. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I have Pam, Pam Ott, come on up? And Dane, go for it. Uh, Dane Chekolinski, 3217 West Apache Drive in Sheboygan. Hello, my name is Dane Chekolinski. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm here speaking to the Common Council as director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, or SCEDC. The SCDC was created in 2010 forged during the heart of the recession where nearly one out of every 10 people lost their jobs in our community. The SCDC's mission today remains the same as, as it did when we were created, to improve the economic well-being and long-term prosperity of the businesses, residents, and communities in Sheboygan County. The SCDC fundamentally re remains in support of all projects that create jobs and capital investment in our community. The majority of our board of directors supports this development on North Taylor Drive. We support Aurora's investment just as we would support any other medical or business expansion that leads to more investment and jobs within Sheboygan County. The more investments that are made here, the more industries that position themselves for long-term growth, the more resilient our community will be during future economic cycles. We recognize that there has been almost no opposition to the fact that Aurora wants to expand in our community, but rather the placement of that expansion on North Taylor Drive, which displaces recreational space. Many neighborhood residents feel discouraged at the prospect of losing public green space, despite the development being of economic benefit for the majority of citizens of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. As the SCDC assists a variety of companies looking for new locations due to growth or consolidation, one of the first lessons learned is that a business location is a predictor of that business's success. Businesses tend to locate near similar successful businesses. This is why we find shopping malls, planned industrial parks, and yes, even clustered uh, medical services. Industries cluster because the same attributes that make it an area appealing to one company also makes that area appealing to both its competitors and complementary firms. These attributes can include easy access to the interstate and Highway 23, an area serviced by public transit for use by both employees and patients, and tapping into customer awareness, custo sorry, tapping into customer awareness by locating near similar businesses in an area that have earned the reputation of Sheboygan's medical corridor. The phrase Sheboygan Medical Corridor is used by both the real estate and medical professionals to describe North Taylor. A visual of this area and, and the obvious appeal to the area to the medical industry is seen on this chart that I had distributed earlier. It is because of the SCDC's steadfast commitment to encouraging and cataly catalyzing jobs and investment in Sheboygan County that our organization would like to go on record in supporting Aurora in their endeavor. Right on the button. Thank you. <laughs> um, can I have, uh, is it Christine Larson? Christine, if you want to come on up, please. And we have Jeff on board. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. She can see me. I can. <laughs> I can. I can. So I, I can feel that earlier. Pain. Digging in my heart. Uh, my name is Jeff heart. Welsh. Uh, my address is W1784 Highview Court. I live in the town of Sheboygan. Um, I'd like to talk about a couple ideas. Got to get through them quick. I came here about 12 years ago. I was a 32-year-old urologist straight out of training. 
Uh, pretty bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, ready to go. Had a lot of opportunities. Over 40 different positions in the state were open. I interviewed at cities from as, uh, up north in uh, Marshfield, out west in La Crosse, uh, at, at, uh, and as well as two or three spots in Milwaukee. So I, I literally had my pick of any spot I wanted to go in the state. I'm from Fond du Lac originally. I like this size town, <clears throat> Sheboygan at the time. If you remember back then, was in Reader's Digest, top 10 city. Hasn't been in there lately, has it? Uh-uh. We've fallen down. This city's different than when I came here 12 years ago. There were whispers of Blue Harbor projects, whispers of PGA championship courses going up, fantastic restaurants opening. Employment was awesome. We were rolling. This was a great city. In comparison to my hometown of Fond du Lac, where I grew up, Sheboygan was it. Uh, it was neat. It still is a great city, but it's changed. We've not grasped and hung on to that progressive feeling. This is a fantastic opportunity. It truly is a once in two, three generations opportunity that comes across to you aldermen. You guys get to make a great decision, a, a large decision, that will not affect us as much as it will affect my kids and their kids and where they live. If you want this city to remain vital and remain a spot where you can attract 32-year-old physicians, trades guys in the back and their families, somewhere around four or 500 workers, sounds like they have represented between their three speakers, we have to grasp this opportunity. This is not maybe, this is not folly, this is not fairy tale. This is a real dollars with real people. We have 1,700 kids in our Lakeshore United football club. I also happen to be a coach and a board member there. It's a fantastic club. Uh, it's grown a ton. I've been in it since you know, my son's 16, since he was 9, 10. Uh, we're up to 1,700 members, kids. That doesn't include Sheboygan Falls, all the outlying communities, Oostburg, Plymouth, another five, six, seven hundred kids. There's over 23, 2,400 kids that are playing soccer. This opportunity isn't just about green space. The green space will be there. It will be expanded. The south side grows. The city grows. It remains a fresh, vital place. That's all I got to say. Another good time. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have um, Adam, Adam Brill, come on up? And Pam, yes. it's your turn. Okay. Thank you. My name is Pam Ott, and I live in Sheboygan Falls. I serve Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center and the Aurora Clinics in Sheboygan and Calumet Counties. I urge you to support this project for the Sheboygan community by voting in favor of both proposed amendments tonight. I do recognize that this has been a very difficult and emotional time. I would like to recap the three primary reasons why this project is so important to the Sheboygan community. Number one, increased access to health care services in a more centralized location for our families in Sheboygan County. Number two, the ripple effect of this entire project, including the development of the new regional sports complex, will support significant economic development in our city and county, including development we haven't even imagined yet. Number three, as a condition of sale, Aurora will be replacing and upgrading the athletic fields, which will jumpstart the new regional sports complex. This is what my hometown of Rona, Wisconsin did. However, over a much longer period of time. I would like to share with you excerpts from an email I received from the mayor of Verona, Wisconsin. Number one, we are very proud that Verona has the reputation of being a sports mecca. Our current and past city councils recognize the importance of providing this service to our residents and their families and also view it as a significant economic driver for our community. We continually receive positive feedback from visitors regarding the quality of our facilities and the friendliness of our community. He went on and talked about that a third hotel is being built near the Holiday Inn 
and we're going through the process of approving a fourth hotel near a new establishment. Many people that come to Verona for sporting events are staying at other hotels because we just don't have enough hotel rooms. In addition, thousands of families come to Verona for sporting events but do not require overnight rooms. <coughs> he also talked about, he went on and talked about that several national tournaments of various sports have taken place in Verona and continue to reserve our facilities for their events. And also, Verona has also now hosted, this is something they didn't imagine, um, they, we host the Ironman event or a portion of it, the biking portion, and then he writes, it amazes me how many vehicles I see with out-of-state license plates coming to Verona to train for the Ironman. They also visit and spend money at our restaurants and other local businesses. For these reasons, I urge you to support this entire project and vote in favor of both of the proposed amendments tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Uh, next, could I have Donald, Donald Girk? Come on up. Donald, are you here? I'm Jaker. Okay. And Christine, you can go ahead. Um, I'm Christine Larson. I'm the Director of Operations at the Aurora Sheboygan Clinic, and I am here tonight to urge you to vote in favor of the proposal. Um, I want to speak a little bit about the public health issues that I, as a nurse, um, feel compelled to tell you about. We have a juvenile diabetes issue in this community, and supporting this proposal and building the athletic facilities that are proposed as part of this project will help us take care of kids in our community that have diabetes and other health issues related to obesity. It's very, very important. The physicians that have gotten up here and spoken about lack of space in the operating rooms and the condition of the current field of dreams, it's all very important, but ultimately we're here to take care of patients, and that's why I'm here tonight. I'm not going to take my full three minutes, but I want to impassion you to vote in favor of the project so that we can get some real live um, efforts going to get our kids healthier and stave off obesity and diabetes. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get um, Kurt Brower to come on up? Kurt, are you here? Is Kurt Brower? Okay, we'll go to the next one. Uh, I believe it's Jill Rieseberg. Is Jill here? I think, I think Kurt's, the other Kurt's coming up. <laughs> okay. There's Kurt. <laughs> All right. Adam, right? Yes. Go ahead. Hello. My name is Adam Brill. I'm the outpatient rehabilitation supervisor over at Aurora Sports Medicine Institute here in Sheboygan. Um, I have the responsibility of overseeing our therapy department as well as our sports medicine department. And the one word that I really thought of coming into this night and I've been hearing over and over again is opportunity. I'd like to speak to you about three different opportunities. One in regards to the health and safety of our children. The other opportunity to expand health services that are desperately needed for this area, as well as the opportunity to be able to expand current services to also meet those demanding needs. From a child safety standpoint, I'm an athletic trainer by background. Our big areas are injury prevention, injury evaluation, as well as injury rehabilitation. I can tell you firsthand, because I've taken care of them, the children that have been injured from the current fields and the status of how they're kept and how they've been in specifically in the early spring as well as the late fall. Brand new athletics facilities will help prevent those injuries. Parents don't like medical bills. Kids don't like sitting out of sports. Giving a brand new complex is going to allow them to not only prevent from getting injured, but also play on better facilities and the, uh, the amount of economic development, as other people have said, much better than myself. Uh, the second opportunity I'd like to tell you is being in the city of Sheboygan being able to expand and grow our present services to be able to help the community that desperately needs it. In my, in, in my line of work over at the Sports Med Institute, we're dealing with people that have functional limitations, that have a hard time with mobility. The surgery center not only will help take care of their problem, but the pre-operation visits with orthopedic surgeons that will be on site, as well as the follow-up appointments with physicians, as well as our therapy staff, will be key in being centrally located to allow for less distance for them to travel, as well as to be on city bus routes to be able to get them to our facility. We have a number of patients right now that have a hard time getting to see us, and keeping us within the city will help continue to let them use the bus line to be able to get us there. The third opportunity is to be able to look at expanding other services. It's been talked about, this is not a hospital. This is a medical office building with an outpatient surgery center. By offloading some of our current clinic programs, as well as our hospital programs, that leaves a void that our other services, such as our NICU, our ED, behavioral health, they're going to be able to expand into that. We've said already we're the only NICU that's in this area. We have the only inpatient behavioral health unit in this area. By offloading some of these hospital 
programs, we're going to be able to reinvest that money into our current hospital building. So it, the, the thought that this new building is a hospital just, just isn't true because there is going to be a lot of time and effort put into those different areas. So again, we look at opportunity. Opportunity doesn't come very often. When we look at the amount of opportunities to the extent and the grandeur that these opportunities present, I would really urge you and please ask that you please vote in favor of a great opportunity, not only for the city of Sheboygan, but also for this area. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Jill, is Jill here, please? Oh, there you are. Um, Donald, it's your turn. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. I'm speaking for the silent majority that are living in the Mapledale area. I lived at 29th Street. I lived at 27th Place. And I moved up my parents in 1945 to 26th Street. I've lived in this area for 70 years when this was farmland. And we're talking about the sloshy field that they have at, at the, what, the Field of Dreams. Well, I can attest to that because there used to be a creek that used to run through there and it ran down to Geely Avenue, which is Geely Avenue and, and uh, 29th Street today, but Geely Avenue didn't go through. And there was a small lake there, so I, I can attest to the water. The seniors, young or old, need this medical facility. I watched this whole area develop. It's not going to, at least they will use it full time. The way it's being used now is just seasonal and only part time. And when they do use it, I walk, I walk this route. I used to run it. I'm too old to run now. I'm 82. I can't <laughs> run anymore. <laughs> so I walk this route, so I observe what's going on there. When they do use it, they only use a little bit of the south side of it. They use a little bit of the north side of it. The rest of the field stands empty. Over 90% of this field is never used for anything. It stands empty. When the season comes and winter comes, there's nothing on there, but once in a while, some people are running their dogs. It's a shame, but I'll go on. Now I'd like to address some of these myths that these letter writers write. I call them scare, scare tactics. They write in there, my property's gonna devaluate because they're gonna put a, a medical facility. Not true. You could have gone onto your computer and looked up the assessments, the assessed values of the properties that surround Memorial Hospital, and you would find that these properties are in demand. I've talked to a realtor, and these properties, when they go on the market, they sell immediately. If your property devaluates, you, it's your responsibility to let you, when your property, you don't take care of it, you are responsible. This building will not devaluate your property. Scare tactic number two they use in these letters that they write to the press, which really aggravates me. <laughs> Parks and picnic areas. Well, neighbors, be aware, because now we're coming to your neighborhood next and we're gonna take your park out, it's gonna be gone. The Field of Dreams was never designed to be a park. It was designed for a middle school. Now, if you had a middle school built there and you lived there, you'd have children going up and down and running around and, and you'd have paper in your yard, you'd have all kinds of Excuse things. me, Donald, I have to interrupt, I'm sorry. Oh, too bad, I'm not done. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Nick, can I get um, Chris, our chief, up here? Chris Domogowski, is he somewhere? Chris. Our chief. Our chief. The other chief. The other chief, chief. He's coming. Okay, now we're set. All right. Good to go now. And yes, you can. Yeah. Well, it's a tough act to follow. <laughs> it is. <laughs> as a resident of Sheboygan and as a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers 494, I support the Aurora's proposal to build a new outpatient surgery center, medical office building, and investment in our community recreation facilities. 
As a resident of Sheboygan and as a parent of children who are actively involved in our community youth sports league, I'm particularly excited about Aurora's investment in our community's recreation facilities. Aurora proposes will bring a combined 37 new acres of recreational space onto our community, which will include the relocation and upgrading of the Field of Dreams and combined to the development of a regional sport tournament facility at the Butson Farm. The Butson Farm development will include a tournament level field. The facility will serve as a regional destination for tournaments and bring in new families attending their children's <coughs> games into our community. The tourism generated by the regional tournament will generate local business support from visiting families. Additionally, the project will expand access for youth sports leagues and encourage children to be active and healthy sports activities. I hope you support the Aurora proposal as this project is truly an investment in our children and in our community. Thank you. Thank you. All right, can I get um, Renee, Renee Rush up? And Jill? Hi, I'm Jill Reesberg. I live at 3706 Superior Avenue. I'm here about the sale of the Field of Dreams. I feel this sale is a win-win for all involved. Our children are resilient and I don't think they will be traumatized if the Field of Dreams is improved and moved across the street. Parents drive their children all over the county and the state for sporting events as it is now. I don't think it would be that troublesome to drive them to the Butson location. Why not build a state-of-the-art sports complex? It will boost our economy and it's the wish of Mrs. Butson. Someone said there are too many doctor's offices in the area of the Field of Dreams, and we don't need one more. She is correct in the fact that there are several medical offices, dental offices, a hospital, and a surgery center. This is a time when patients have a right to choose who they want to treat them for their medical care. I am an Aurora caregiver for over 45 years, and I've seen a lot of change in medicine. The Field of Dreams is the perfect location for the medical complex because it's on the bus route. It has easy access to and from Highway 23 and I-43, not to mention its close proximity to Memorial Medical Center. Aurora is committed to giving high quality care along with patient-centered service, and it would be absurd of me to assume all opposed to this sale are non-Aurora patients. If you are an Aurora patient, you will understand Memorial Medical Center and the Sheboygan Clinic are filled to capacity. This medical complex will allow patients to stay in Sheboygan for their medical care and not have to travel to other cities. This complex will enable Aurora to provide additional high quality providers and caregivers to meet the needs of our patients. I remember Mr. Hummage as a kind man who loved God, family, community, and children. I find it hard to understand how a man with that integrity would be upset by this sale. Wasn't it his dream to implement a recreational space for our children that is useful and safe? Back in the day, Sheboygan was known as a city of four C's, churches, cheese, children, and chairs. Well, the chairs are gone, but we can get back to the four C's, churches, cheese, children, and community. How fortunate are we as a community to have two people who love our children so much that they would donate large sums of money for our children and maybe we could um, honor them by putting their name on each site. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Herb, Tyler, Herb, are you here? I know he's here because I saw him. He's coming. he's coming, okay. Chris, go ahead. Good evening. I just wanted to talk again for a couple minutes about the importance of keeping uh, Aurora in the city because of the services that they deliver, quality services that are needed in our community, both the emergency room and crisis services. Across the country, there's a, a huge crisis with access to mental health care services. She Sheboygan Aurora provides both inpatient and outpatient mental health services. Without, we would be in a very big, big, bad place. So I appreciate the services that, that they deliver to the community in those areas and their commitment to creating a mental health wellness center to help <clears throat> further move the city forward in those areas. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Um, can we get Patricia? I'm not sure the last name. Patricia? Leganowski, maybe? There we go. All right. We have, Ren let's see here, we got Renee. Renee. You've got three minutes. Right, thank you. 
First of all, I want to say that I urge you to vote no to the reclassification and to the rezoning of 3306 Salmon Avenue. I realize that some of your minds have been made up. Some have been made up from day one. Some are still undecided, and some are not sure still. Um, I feel like if you're voting, you need to be voting the voice of your district. And some of you have said that I feel that my district voices are saying to vote for it or district voices to say against it. I want to say that in my district, I'm not sure to this date who's going to vote for it or who's going to vote against it. I would hope that the people in District 2, our voices would be heard and this would be voted down because our district does not want to have this happen. We are not going to say that, you know, debate whether or not it's a park. If you're, op if you're reclassifying <coughs> open public park space, obviously it's considered a park, regardless of who owns it. There's county parks, there's city parks, there's school parks, there's state parks. It's a green space, people. This whole process, I think, has been a parody. We get three minutes to come up and speak. You guys can't interact and say anything. And then we sit down. The public hearing portion is done. And then you can speak and say what you want. We can't ask any questions. We can't get any dialogue. Uh, when we try to, sometimes we're getting responses from some of the aldermen. Sometimes we're not. We're not getting questions answered. It's very frustrating on our end. We, all we want to know, all we want is our voices heard. We want to feel like we are important and that we are listened to. And throughout this whole process, I don't feel that I have been listened to. I don't feel like I am important enough to give the time of day to to hear what my what I have to say and how I feel and what people I represent have to say. I felt like we've been roadblocked many times in various w areas. We've also been asked to bring out some information, give us some numbers, give us some, you know, idea of what's going to cost, what's going to happen. So we bring that out and then people are telling us, you're lying, you're not sa saying the truth. But everything we found has been on the internet. Everything we found, we've been through. We're not making up numbers, we're not making things up. Why is the burden of proof on the citizens? Why is it not on your end or Aurora's end to answer the questions and give these answers and stop playing this game? What is the rush? Why do we have to hurry up and get this deal done now? I mean, we've gotten two months maybe, not even two months, to discuss this, and there has not been a discussion. It's been, you say something, I say something. Then you say something, and then someone else says something, and that's all it is. It's not a discussion at all. I want to know how many people have you spoken with that aren't affiliated with Aurora, that aren't employed by Aurora or have wives or husbands that work at Aurora? How many people have you spoken to that are in favor of this, that do not have a leg in the race, that, don't, that aren't going to get some sort of financial gain? Excuse me, Renee, your time's up. Can I get Chris Gregory? Chris, is Chris here? And let's see. It would have been, is this on? It is, and just give me a second. You are ready to go. Uh, my name is Herb Tyler. I wish all of you that are sitting in the gallery could have been, and you could have had you chosen to, have been on Erie Avenue on March 28th, <clears throat> and we had a rally from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, with signs saying basically save the field of dreams. During that entire three hours, we had a steady stream of traffic on Erie Avenue, and it was interesting that we had four negative responses all morning, and we had hundreds and hundreds of people with positive responses, thumbs up, waves, smiles, honking the horn in a, in a real positive way, uh, which was a real eye-opener to me and would have been to you, too, had, had you seen that. A very different picture than is being painted right here. When voting tonight, there's some things you need to put aside. I'm going to talk about principle. We, you have to put aside the secret meetings between Aurora and the school district. That happened. It's done with. Uh, it's the most difficult thing to put aside is the dangling carrot for the Butson property, and that is tantalizing. I will, I will agree with that. You have to put aside the one-on-one -on -one meetings that Aurora's had with the aldermen that we didn't have the luxury of having uh, and, and represent the people that vote for you, your constituents. And you have to put aside the vocabulary chosen by Aurora. I really believe Aurora needs a facility. When they talk about needs, I agree with that. I think it's an old facility, and I think it, this community is going to be well, well represented and well served when it's replaced. 
However, when they say they need to be on the field of dreams, that's a want, and there's a huge difference between needs and wants. In the face of all of that, and all this transpired, I'm asking you to vote against the rezoning on this principle that land set aside for parks should not go to any business venture. It's wrong for any reason to fundamentally change the nature of a large residential neighborhood by building over a citizen-owned recreational facility. Save 3306 Seaman Avenue, commonly known as the Field of Dreams. What will happen? Aurora will still build a surgery center and an office building, and there's still going to be the revenue, the tax revenue that you're talking about, and more doctors and robotics. You're still going to have improved medical services, which is a wonderful thing for the community. All of those things will happen. Not one higher-up person in management Aurora has ever made the threat that if this isn't done at this location, we're going to leave Sheboygan. That's never happened because they have no intention of doing that. At least they're honest about that. They, they'll stay in the community. They'll build in the community. You couldn't get them to leave if you tried because they want to be here, and that's a good thing. The, um, it'll take longer to develop the Butson property. I'll give you that. Anything worth having is worth working hard for, and the harder you work for it, the more precious it becomes to you. So our community has a long tradition of supporting sports and being generous in the community and me, helping Herb? youth activities, and they will. With Your this time too. is up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I have Susan Sunquist? Is Susan here? And Patricia. You are next. I'm Pat Leganowski from 2225 North 35th Street. Patricia, would, could you, you lower the mic? Yeah, lower the mic a little bit. Very good. What was, the, la what was the last name? Last name? Leganowski. Okay. Um, I've lived in that neighborhood for 37 years. I've been there. It was a cornfield when I came. Then the school system bought it from the church, Ebenezer Church. That was fine. They said that they were going to build a school there. We were all for it. We had 30-some kids on our small little block. We were all for it. Now, it was made into a park. We agreed. We thought this, or not a park, excuse me, a recreational facility um, field. We, our kids have played there. There's kids there every day. My husband has taken pictures of all the kids playing out there. You can go down there every day. And even today, when they say it's soaking wet, there are kids playing soccer there today. Everybody's talking soccer fields, soccer fields. What about the baseball fields? The baseball diamond that was dedicated, what about that? To me, picking it up and moving it is like taking a cemetery and moving graves to a different place. It's a sacred place. It was done in memoriam to someone's son who passed away. And I see a few smirks out there, but, you know, I'm going to look past that. I mean, it is a sacred place for many of us in that area. <coughs> the other thing that I want to bring up is we talk about you're adding 41 acres. Mrs. Butson <coughs> didn't sell this to the land to the city due to the fact that she knew for many years you were chasing her to have that part of the um, industrial park. So she decided that she would dedicate this or donate this to the city as recreational area, okay? She would turn over in her grave to find out that you're taking away, because if you have 54 acres that were given to you and that's green space, and you have 35 acres right now that's green space, and you're gonna move it on to 17 acres, you're taking away. There's no way you are adding green space. I just don't understand how people don't get that math. And they keep telling us we're incorrect. No, you are. The 54 acres were given to you to be green space no matter what. What we do with them, that's a different story. She wanted it for recreation, and that's it. She wasn't aware that there was going to be this $5 million dangling out there that everybody's looking to get this developed with. It was to develop slowly. It wasn't to be done quickly. Um, let's see. So mainly, I want to also know why Aurora isn't going to build on the other land that they purchased, the other three purchases of land that they've done. Why aren't they considering those? They are just further south. Um, one is way on the south side. The other is near the new field. And the other is off of... Excuse me, Patricia. Uh, next, could Melissa, is Melissa here, Braish? 
Melissa? Okay, thanks. Hi, my name's... Okay. Let me... Yep, go ahead. Hi, my name's Chris Gregory. I live at 2714 South 15th Street in Sheboygan. I've been a long-time resident of Sheboygan. My kids played soccer in the area for a long time. My oldest one's 45 years old. We helped build that uh, field of dreams over there. There's a lot of volunteers that put many hours in there. When it comes down to where Aurora is going to build, this is someone's made a comment about that we don't take this, it's going to be thrown in the garbage. This is Aurora's plan G, and they have a plan H also. There's no reason for them to build in a field of dreams. With all the, the uh, property that they do own on the south side, there's no reason why they couldn't sit there and build the, the prop, or to build a hospital over there. Puller is another area, land, just as big that they could build on. So I encourage you, all them, to vote no on the rezoning for the property. Thank you. Mm, is Matt... Is Matt here? Matt Brash? I saw him earlier. I, I think he's here. He's here? Okay. Um, Susan, hold on, let me just stop this here. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm Susan Sunquist, 2338 West Shelley Court. I moved to the fine city of Sheboygan 11 years ago because of the wonderful school district. I'm an employee there. I love my job. I love the support that the administration gives me. I also love my neighborhood. It's why I moved here. I moved because I live next to the field of dreams. I appreciate the green space. I appreciate hearing the crack of the bat. I appreciate hearing children screaming and yelling and having fun. I have absolutely no doubt that Aurora has fine professionals doctors, nurses, building grounds managers, support staff. I've used these facilities. I don't think that any of the quality service that these people provide for us will deteriorate if they don't take away or move the field of dreams. I don't doubt that. I see dedicated people in the audience. I see people and professionals who care about the health care they give. And I also believe they will give that same quality health care somewhere else. I do not think it is appropriate for a business to change a thriving neighborhood. As I drive around this city, I see empty buildings, land. I see neighborhoods that are declining. This is not a neighborhood that's declining. It's a neighborhood that's thriving. There are young children in this neighborhood. There are families. There are senior citizens. It's a positive area. I would like that to stay. And I beg you, I beg you tonight to consider what you're doing to a thriving neighborhood in this fine city of Sheboygan if you choose to rezone. There's a lot wrong in this community. This neighborhood is not one of the things that is wrong. Aurora is not wrong in this community, but not in this place. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Can I, uh, Debbie, do you want to come on up? And Melissa. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I'm Melissa Brush from 3320 Geely Avenue. Um, I just gave the alderman, and, and you received this in your email, um, a letter from Attorney Basler on our behalf. Um, and it talks about the open meeting laws violation and the fact that this deal came to you illegally. So we just want you to know that. Um, it also talks about that the fact that the uh, Field of Dreams is a public park, should be protected under the law of the public parks, and you need a three-fourths vote in order to pass that reclassification. And it also talks about the conflict of interest of one of our aldermen, and there's proof inside of there on page seven that he is a director on the Aurora Foundation currently. I didn't mention any names, Mayor. We've all seen the facts, and this deal between Aurora and the school district is going to have a huge 
negative impact on the budget. I've shared that with you. I've given you all the financial information. It is going to cost the city taxpayers $2.5 million to do phase one, and we all know that. We're not going to have it if we do this, and we'll never, ever see phase two. I do want to believe that the council would have sunset the garbage tax two years ago if the city was doing well financially. This tax brings in a revenue of $869,000 according to the city budget. My question to you is, if we truly cannot unburden the taxpayers of, with this fee, then how can we afford $800,000 to put towards this, this project? It makes no sense. <sighs> I came to this city with my husband, and who's a city police officer here, and that's why we came. And we weren't sure we were going to stay, but I'm going to tell you, two kids, a house, two hamsters, and two cats later, I think we're staying. That's the plan anyway. But I came here with a dream. After I got out of college, we got married, and we had two children, and we wanted to buy a home. And location is about our home. And we love our home and our neighborhood. And we bought our first home in this community because of the, commun the neighborhood and the park that is there. Not because there was a hospital down the street. That's not why I bought my home and why I pay my taxes here. So my kids play on the Field of Dreams and mini fields. They uh, go to Sheboygan Area School District. They play soccer. They play football. Uh, they play all the sports in this community. Um, I'm on the council for the school district at, in Lincoln Erdman, and I'm actually riding the bus down with one of the classes. I must have been on NyQuil when I agreed to do with that <laughs> um, this Friday. So I help out in the school. But I want to tell you that never once has my kids come home from the Field of Dreams and said, boy, those should be tournament-style fields. I'm not playing there anymore. They never said that about any park in this city. Not about Optimus Park, not about Volrath Park, not about any park that we've been to and we've been playing. This Excuse is me, not Melissa. a necessity for Aurora to build. Excuse me, Melissa. There. And I have, is it, I'm not going to pronounce your name wrong, Alizé? Okay. And next on the list, Matt, go ahead. Hi, my name is Matt Brush. I also live at 3320 Geely Avenue. Um, my plea is a little less emotional than my wife's. However, I don't disagree with uh, her intent or her uh, passion about this. All I know about policing really is that good neighbors have good boundaries. That's part of the reason that there's zoning laws. They, uh, they segregate different areas. They keep apartment buildings out of uh, single-family dwelling residence. There's a reason behind the city plans. Uh, we have parcels. We buy parcels of land. Some people have one-acre lots. Some people have half-acre lots. Some people have small lots like I do. Uh, changing those boundaries uh, should be a pretty serious thing, and it should be probably because there are no other choices. Our city is still growing. Our city still has room to build. Aurora apparently has known about their needs to expand, and I don't disagree, and I hate the fact that this has turned uh, like Aurora against the neighbors in my area. Because it's not. We have a lot of, we have a lot of uh, friends and family that are part of Aurora, and it's not an us versus them thing. Um, the they should expand. They belong to the city as much as we do. We need them. We need their workers. We need the medical care they provide. Uh, I encourage them to expand. Um, the biggest thing I don't know, understand about this thing, it hasn't been explained, is if you ever seen the parcel, it's a huge, it's a huge area. It's a huge big square. And the map that we saw shows right in the middle of this big square, it shows this outpatient surgery center, and it shows their office complex. And it shows like 500 or 600 parking spots. Now, by comparison, across the street at St. Nicholas, they sit on two acres of land. They have about 60 parking spots, and they're really much doing the same thing. Now, if you know what the plan is, and you have a big map somewhere that we haven't seen, so I understand your growth, and I understand how all the Tetris pieces are going to fit together in this complex across the street, I haven't seen it. But I know that if you're building something and you don't know how you're going to expand, I know that you don't plop things down in the middle without knowing how the rest of the buildings and stuff are going to form around it. Now, we've heard Mr. Uh, or Dr. Grubner uh, say that, or Grabner say that there's no new hospital, there's no new hospital, there's no new hospital. It's been quoted. In five years from now, he may or may not be here. There, there may be a new hospital. 
There may be other buildings that are going to be built over there, but we haven't seen the plan. We've seen the plans for what the Boots and Proper is going to look like. You know, it's fantastic. And I don't disagree with the fact that that would be a gem to have. But what I'm saying is, I want to own a Porsche. I make a policeman's salary. The city can't sunset the garbage tax. They have their own financial issues. We're asked to do more with less. That's what the city's been asked to do. We've, we've downsized. We've done the best with our economy we can. We've seen some growth in certain areas like our hotels and stuff like that, and I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see our city grow. We're going to take undue... Excuse me, Matt. Yep. I Thank got you. Uh, can I have uh, Toby? Is it Toby Green? It's Toby. Okay, great. Okay. My hey, name's on, Debbie. Debbie Dimula. Uh, I vote no to rezoning the Field of Dreams. Okay, the Field of Dreams is protected by a DNR stewardship development grant which needs to be maintained in perpetuity for the enjoyment of the public. Changing the property from active recreational to non-recreational use requires conversion, a process which demands that the city duplicate to equal or better the amenities to a place that is not an existing recreational space. Therefore, the proposal of upgrading Roosevelt Park's current high school baseball field to replace the softball field on the current field of dreams will not work according to these DNR requirements. City taxpayers will be left paying the conversion costs, and here's why. On page 6, section 12 of the Real Estate Purchase Agreement, it states, the, quote, the buyer, Aurora, shall not be liable for any of the seller's obligations, contracts, agreements whatsoever, unquote, which means that we, the city taxpayers, are responsible for completing any of the replacement obligations left unfulfilled by Aurora's funds. Page 9, section 24, states that Aurora is responsible for the construction of the fields on the east parcel, but there is no dollar amount commitment in the purchase agreement, and it does not require Aurora to pay for the decontamination of that parcel, the disposal of the contaminated soil, infrastructure, etc., which will therefore fall onto city taxpayers again. On page 9, section 25 of the purchase agreement, it states that Aurora will only contribute $2,233,244 to be used for the construction of the replacement fields. At the top of page 10, it says, quote, Aurora releases all obligations to pay for any costs above this donation. The rezone application falsely states that there is a net gain of 40 acres, but the boots and property was donated to the city of Sheboygan, so we already own it. I am sure that Ms. Bootson wanted to add to the city's green space, not take away parks from Sheboygan. The Field of Dreams was not for sale and was sold in haste below its real value. In the stewardship conversion screening form, the 25-acre East Parcel was appraised at $2,560,000. Therefore, the 35-acre Field of Dreams would be valued at $3,500,000, but Aurora is only paying $2,500,000. Our petition against the rezoning of the Field of Dreams confirms that city council members should vote accordingly. Aurora can build on its other properties or buy a commercial property in Sheboygan and spare the Field of Dreams and its residents. It's not the job of the city of Sheboygan to rezone a popular park for the benefit of Aurora, a private business. I support city statute 74-2, which states, the city shall establish, maintain, and preserve its parks in perpetuity for the benefit and enjoyment of all generations of the city's residents. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. Um, and Scott, you'll come up to Alderman Bourne's spot. All right. And Alizé, you can go ahead. Yes, my name is Alize, and I reside at 1704 North 35th Street. So I would break down a lot of these comments into what we could basically break down as marketing. So I would like to address the council as to your obligations. Even beyond the constituents, you have other obligations. The Field of Dreams is a park, so I will go after what Debbie brought up, section 74-2, the establishment of parks. The city shall establish, maintain, and preserve its parks in perpetuity for the benefit and enjoyment of all generations of the city's residents. The taking of a park for any non-park use, either public or private, is a serious matter and shall not be done without the recommendation of the Board of Parks and Forestry 
commission to the Public Works Committee by three-fourths vote after three public hearings have been held regarding whether or not a park should be taken or a referendum held. A recommendation of the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission to the Public Works Committee to take a park for a no any non-park use must be approved by the Public Works Committee and confirmed by a three-fourths vote of the Common Council. A recommendation to hold a referendum may be approved by a majority vote of the Common Council. I don't know if even it has gone to Parks and Forestry or the Public Works, but that is certainly a part of this ordinance that you should be following. Any change in the ordinance requires a three-fourths vote of the Common Council. According to the City of Sheboygan zoning map, there is a small stream running through the northwest portion of the property. Many have already mentioned it. According to the Sheboygan County zoning map, this small stream channel feeds into a pond on the northwest corner of the Field of Dreams and is coded as P1 according to the city's own ordinance. Subchapter 15-5, Natural Resource Protection Regulations. This little stream channel will be designated as a non-navigable drainage waste subject to Section 15 dot 506 drainage way overlay zoning district according to table 15.204 a drainage way would fall under the jurisdiction of permanently protected green space areas to provide a natural resource buffer zone with minimally allowed development the determination of the drainage way boundaries general drainage way boundaries are depicted on sheet 2 of the official zoning map however when i have gone to the city to find out what happened with this sheet, it is suspiciously missing. I would like to add that we did the right thing for any of you who remember it with Sheridan Park. It stayed a park. So I would urge you, do the right thing again. We didn't regret it then. We aren't going to regret it now. Another thing, look at some of the cities around our country. I mean, New York City, do you know it for a medical facility? Everyone knows Central Park. I mean, come on, this doesn't take rocket science, and our ordinances back it up as well. I urge you, do the right thing tonight. <coughs> Your reputation will basically be on the line. Thank you. Can I have um, Ken, is it Eberhardt? Ken? And then we have Toby. Go ahead, Toby. Okay, my real name is Lorraine. Uh, most of my friends call me Toby. Last name is Green, and I live at 2308 North 35th Street. I had a prepared uh, statement here, and I decided to do a couple of rebuttals instead of reading my statement. First of all, on the way over here, uh, there was um, soccer practice going on, and nobody was wearing loafers. They were out there with their soccer shoes and their tennis shoes and whatever, so it looked like it was functioning just fine. Um, there's been a great controversy between what is a recreational facility and a park. I bet you if I looked them up, I didn't have a dictionary and I don't have an iPhone, but uh, I, I probably would get the same definition. One is synonymous with the other. Synonymous, excuse me. Um, one person mentioned, they told that this is going to be good for the whole community, rezoning the property and selling it to Aurora. I personally am here to tell you, I'm part of this community, and it's not good for me. It's not good for my neighbors. As you've heard the last half of uh, the people speaking, nobody seemed to be uh, real, real excited about that. So it's not, not good for the whole community. These are things that I just jotted down. Um, one person talked about the zoning. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but anyway, he said that... The, there was only residential uh, on one park, particular area. Well, excuse me, the whole, uh, the whole park is surrounded by residential, except for the church across the street to the south, the uh, empty field across the street, uh, everybody else that lives there. I mean, that is residential. Another person says, um, this is not going to take anything away from anybody. I mean, they actually met, uh, sent me that statement. And, and I, I, I uh, charge him to tell that to the children who are playing soccer there tonight and who are probably planning on going, on going there this weekend. And here's the one that has gotten me from right from the very beginning. People have come up here from Aurora. They're sitting out there. They have all the seats reserved. They came up to here for the first half of the, of the presentation or uh, input session. There's been carpenters speaking, restaurant owners, stream, steam fitters, doctors, nurses. And they have, they're telling you 
that you should vote for the re, uh, rezoning because that's going to make Aurora's business operative. Well, Aurora can operate anybody, anywhere, excuse me. This has not been the, the uh, focus of this conversation. The focus of this conversation is, do we sell that piece of property and destroy a park so that Aurora can, can uh, build buildings on it and change, change its uh, structure? That is the question. It's not what Aurora is doing or what the restaurant owner is going to do, because all of that will... Excuse me, Toby. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I get Jim? Is it... I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. H-O-E-L-L? -L? Okay. Didn't want to even try it. <laughs> Jim Hill. All right. Scott. And we're going to have Scott first. Yep. And he won't be coming up. He'll be right there. Okay, Scott, go ahead. Okay. The first question probably should be asked is, to fuel the dreams of park? Some people say it's not a park. Some say it is a park. And if you look at the screen on the board, it says that on line four, that property is classified as a public park and open space. So how can it not be a public park if it's zoned for that? And I think that's something that's forgotten. And we've had people say, Aurora's got to build on that property. Aurora can build anywhere in the city where there's enough land that's not being used for something else already. They aren't going to leave the city. Everybody's going to get the jobs. The construction firms are going to get the job of building wherever they build in the city. I heard that they need public transportation. I'm sure Mayor Man um, Vandersteen the head of Memorial and the head of Sheboygan Metro could sit down and have all the problems solved with public transportation in 30 minutes. <coughs> so that shouldn't make no difference. I've also heard people say that the current field of dreams is in bad shape. Well, that's a maintenance issue. Wouldn't the same thing happen to a new field of dreams in 10 years if the upkeep is not kept up? I also have heard that we need to attract tournaments by having a new field of dreams. Well, the different organizations that sponsor tournaments look for a place where they can get a good field and a central location to attract a lot of teams. How many teams are going to come from the east, the southeast, or the northeast? you got a lake there. So even if you have new facilities the lake is going to prevent a lot of tournaments come from coming here. Also, I was told that Aurora has outdated facilities. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean they're going to build a new hospital anyway on that site? If they want to move and build on a new site that's not being used, there is a site across the street from the Field of Dreams to the east. Nobody would complain about that being fixed up. Part of that area right now is an eyesore. And Aurora would still be in their medical corridor like they want. Also, uh, a lot of people that would come to the tournaments if they're on the south side on a new field of dreams would come from the south. They're going to take the first freeway exit to get there from the south and they're going to leave the same way they are not going to head into the city of Sheboygan to go to a restaurant or any other place. It's just going to make it much easier for the people to avoid Sheboygan. Thank you. Okay, can I have uh, Jane Martin, please? <clears throat> I believe it's Jane. All right. Ken, it's your turn. Hello. Um, go ahead. I've been coming to the Field of Dreams for many years. I spent a lot of time there. Um, my main concern with the vote today is how it will affect the other parks in our city. I'm afraid that this will set a dangerous precedent and endanger all of our parks. If another business were, were to come in and offer a large amount of money, would Evergreen Park go, Kiwanis Park, any of our parks? That's what we have to look at. And I urge everyone to vote no to rezoning the Field of Dreams. Thank you, Tom. 
Uh, can I get Car is it Carl Bloomwillis? Carl, if you wouldn't mind. And Jim, you're up. Thank you. I'm uh, Jim Hale. I'm a physician at Aurora. There really hasn't been a lot of physicians when they say that. We've had two prior to me. There's <coughs> over 100 physicians in advanced practice pr providers at Aurora in this community, and we've heard only a few. Um, and, you know, I actually grew up in this city. I uh, went away from my education, came back. And to echo a thing uh, Dr. Welsh said is that when he came out, he was looking for a vibrant community. What's interesting is, can a community bring back their own? To be honest, in my year, there was one other physician who came back to this community, Dr. Wake. Since then, nobody. Um, one of the things at Aurora that I do is work as a uh, OR operations. And so I acutely see the operation effects of Aurora every day. And when they say, will we leave this community? No, we will not. We will give care. And we'll give excellent care, but we want to give better. If we don't expand, will it deteriorate? No, it'll stagnate. We'll give great care, but we can't give better. In the 15 years that I've been here, we have expanded services tremendously. My department alone, anesthesia, has at least one and a half time, or another half amount of providers. The reason we do that is because we have increased the amount of services in the facility dramatically. Services that never been provided in this community. It, it, this, at this point, we have meets the capacity of the building. The bu building we keep upgrading, but we cannot upgrade the space any further. So our space confinement, so we need to offload. Since, we've been, since I've been here, every physician says we're going to expand. It's been our dream to expand. This field of dreams is our dream also. It's going to be our dream for the future to actually expand services of Aurora to that area. Does it make sense? I, I look at things very common sense-wise. This parcel of land, does it make sense to rezone it? It's not in a complete residential. It's on the edge of a community and a residence. To the west, or actually to the south, just Kinney Corridor is a outpatient surgery center, the exact same thing exact same thing that Aurora wants to erect. To me, if you're looking at it, we're just expanding that boundary in the medical corridor. We are not invading into a residential neighborhood. We're, come, we're butting up against one. Patient care. If this thing does not go through, we've been, like I just said, we've been looking for the last 15 years since Mr. Grabner's been here well, the physician group, our main focus for him to do was to help us expand, to find a new facility so, or an additional facility so that we can expand our services. If we do not expand... Excuse me, Jim? Yep. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be very polite. <laughs> okay. Can I have... Is it Tammy... Is it Rob? Is there a Tammy? Okay, can someone? Okay. All right, Jane, you are up. Good evening. I'm here to again encourage you to vote in favor of the Aurora proposal to build a new ambulatory surgery center and medical office building on the Field of Dreams site. I've been an Aurora employee for over 40 years, and, Mike and my, my husband Mike and I have been Field of Dreams neighbors for 38 years. I'm speaking for both of us as we both support the proposal to build the outpatient surgery center and the office building. The whole process has been very enlightening for me as I had never been involved in and only minimally aware of the work of the Common Council. I now realize that one of the most significant ways that a person can contribute to our city is to run for elected office. Obviously, it takes a bit of political savvy but it appears that that's not as important as the time, the energy, and the genuine desire to make our community a better place to live. I suspect that not many Sheboygan residents thank you for what you do. Typically, everyone is a critic, sometimes myself included. I was most impressed with the attention that you've demonstrated to all the residents, the Aurora employees who have approached the podiums to speak. Some of the speakers were articulate, some provided interesting data. 
Some were disorganized, some provided inaccurate information, some have been disrespectful, yet you all politely and respectfully listened to all of us. Mike and I walked around the Field of Dreams this weekend, and there are some lawn signs against the proposal, but the vast majority of homes are not displaying any signs. On East and West Shelley Court, there are 12 homes, and only one neighbor is actively dis disagreeing with his proposal. Your vote in favor of the proposal will benefit innumerable Aurora patients, Aurora employees, plus thousands of others involved in soccer, baseball, and football not to mention the restaurants, the hotels, the gas stations, and others who will be positively impacted. The Aurora proposal provides for endless opportunities for our sports community and will give it the jump start that it needs. Aurora will be a great neighbor to the minor minority of residents in the area that are so unhappy. As you likely know, Dave Gravener has reached out to them in an inclusive and collaborative manner. I'm confident that he will continue to encourage the dialogue. My fear is that if this proposal is not approved, who will be the next person, the next industry, or the next corporation who will attempt to purchase the Field of Dreams property or the East Parcel? The unknown possibilities worry me. Thank you for your time and attention. Please support the Aurora proposal and make our community a better place to live and provide health care. <coughs> Thank you, Jane. Okay, next. I truly can't read this. I think it might be, is it an Andrew? Or it's A-N-D something. They live on Pleasant View Road. Yeah. Andrea? Dr. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, Carl, you are ready to go. Hi, I'm Carl Blum Willis. I'm a resident of Sheboygan at 1136 Dillingham. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the public hearing and the opportunity to speak, but I also want to thank each and every one of you. I reached out to you and you thanked me and reached out back, and I appreciate that. I, as a citizen, I don't do this much as far as weigh in and, and give it, you know, thoughts and opinions, um, but it is nice to feel heard. It's nice to feel listened to. Um, it's nice to feel like a voice matters, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I come as a, as a dad of kids that play soccer and sports, and I will be one of those that say, yeah, those fields, we don't get on them in the spring. We don't, you know, my son's having soccer practice right now, or he did an hour ago, indoors, um, at risk of injury and those sort of things where he would really enjoy to be out on a field where he could play. He would enjoy, and we would enjoy as a family, not having to travel all over the state and having some good tournaments here in Sheboygan. So I, I'm in favor of those things, and I would urge you to vote yes. Um, I, I think, you know, a couple people mentioned different words that come up, and I think the one that has been ringing in my head with this is change. And change is hard. Change is hard for everybody. It's, and, and in this sort of situation... Um, you do have to make a decision, and you have to make a decision for change. And I believe that a vote yes is a vote for positive change for our community in so many ways that have been mentioned and much better, well, uh, uh, eloquently said already, a positive change for our community. So thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Uh, John is John Bemis. We have John Bemis. Is he in back? Yeah. Okay. And Tammy, go ahead. My name is Tammy Rob, R-A-B-E. I live at 2224 North 34th Street here in Sheboygan. Um, first, I have to say thank you. Um, I reached out to some of the aldermen, especially in my district, and I have not heard back from you in this process. So um, even after the vote tonight, I still would like that courtesy of a return phone call, please. You represent me in my neighborhood, and I expect action when I call. So secondly, I certainly urge you to vote no tonight to the rezoning of Field of Dreams. We appreciate everything that Aurora has done and Aurora has brought up. Most of those employees, as you've heard, were the first half of every meeting since this has happened. In addition to that, we also understand that Aurora has been coaching their employees through emails as to what to say and what not to say. We also understand that they're... Um, that tonight there are people here that aren't even part of our Sheboygan community. So why are they here speaking on, on Aurora's behalf? I don't know, but those are questions that should be raised. Secondly, 
Why is it that Aurora has such a strong interest in this? We all know that there is plenty of land in Sheboygan for them to build on. Is it because there is a specific uh, bonus for those directors to get this project done on time and within budget? There are emails to support that. So I'll move on. In addition, um, you know, Aurora is donating 5.1 million, which is great. We appreciate that. However, it's going to cost 2.7 million to, to move the Field of Dreams over to the east side. Why is it that Aurora can't build on the east side? They all talk about the, the Field of Dreams now. The current field needs upgrades because of um, uh, poor soil, so on and so forth. That's the same thing is going to happen on the east side. The east side is actually in worse condition even after you would construct it. In addition, so if you use, if you have this, this 2.7 million to move the Field of Dreams over to the east side, you have $25,000 to move the gardens to the south side. That leaves less than 2.3 million to re, redevelop the Boots and Farms on the south side. So how much money are the taxpayers willing to pay to get the field or to get boots and farms to where we're advertising it right now? It's, you're not going to have enough money and the taxpayers or someone will have to pay for that, that difference. So in addition, um, let's see. One of the things that I think has not been brought up in this entire process is that with health, you know, we talked about um, all the health services clustered in one area, and I, truly, I don't believe there has been a study presented or discussed that shows the Medicare laws of how close some of these hospitals can be built. So I think that's Excuse another me, study that hasn't been completed. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea? Go ahead. Andrea Gavin, N5268 in Pleasant View Road in Plymouth. And I'm speaking as a family physician who started practice in Plymouth almost 25 years ago. And I'm also chief medical officer over all of the Aurora facilities in Sheboygan County. Ladies and gentlemen of the Common Council, Mayor Vanderstein. The past two months of activities surrounding the purchase of this land and including the rezoning that we're talking about tonight as well as the DNR approval have been very hard on all of us. I have watched many people giving testimony over the last two months. The neighbors who passionately have fought to save green recreational space adjacent to their homes and we understand that. Aurora caregivers who passionately want more space and up-to-date facilities in which to care for patients as well as to recruit and retain highly trained individuals to care for our community. The sports community, especially youth soccer and youth football, who passionately need more fields to play as well as tournament level fields in which to hold regional games and turn and help our community and our economy. City leaders who passionately want to help improve health care access, keep a tax base in the city of Sheboygan, and support economic growth. The school district who passionately wants what is best for their students, improved fields for their athletic teams, and yes, who will eventually sell land that no longer contributes to their vision. But most of all, this has been hard on all of you the aldermen and older women that represent the city of Sheboygan. I don't need to belabor the issues or reiterate the facts that we have heard. Simply, we need more capacity at Aurora. We need access. We want to build in the city. This location works best for our patients and for our communities. We have exhausted all other options. If this purchase does not go through, yes, we will go to Plan G, and we will look outside the city because we will build this facility. We are committed to rebuilding the fields. It is a contingency of sale of the land. We are committed to being good neighbors. We are committed to providing high-quality health care for our community. Your job is a difficult one. I have been a leader in Aurora for over 20 years, and I understand the struggle and difficulty 
and the difficulty it is to balance serving those you lead with doing what is better for the greater good. Often these things align and then it's easy, but sometimes they don't. So I ask you tonight, looking at the facts, that you vote for what is right for the whole <clears throat> community of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. John? And you may go ahead. So I want to first address why there weren't very many signs. Uh, signs aren't free, and we had to pay for them. And the 50 that we made went like that. So every sign that got made was displayed. So I want to talk a little bit about the very terrifying apocalyptic scenario that has been laid out that's going to happen here in the city of Sheboygan uh, by the 10 Aurora employees that have spoken tonight and some of their other supporters, right? We're going to have no sexual assault services. Now, I serve with Dina and Andrea on the uh, Safe Harbor Board. <coughs> that would be terrible if that happened. Uh, there will be a rise in juvenile diabetes and obesity. Uh, there will be an echo epidemic of sports injuries that will just get worse and worse and worse. There will be no work for our skilled trades. There will be no new restaurants, no job growth, no doctors will come to Sheboygan. This is the implication that has been made by supporters of the rezone, that this will all come to pass, that Aurora, that Sheboygan, excuse me, will be this smoking crater of joblessness and chaos if Aurora doesn't get to build this facility on this land. <coughs> Obviously, that's pretty silly. Roar is a very successful business, one that I respect. They long ago identified the Sheboygan area as an opportunity for them to place and to grow, and they've been very successful here. It defies logic to suggest that if they don't get this facility on this land, that they're suddenly going to abandon the entire area and pack up and go home. What is logical is that the tax and f fiscal implications of this project are damaging for every resident of the city, every taxpayer. The new fields are not being paid in full by Aurora. Melissa and Debbie have shown the shortfalls between what's needed, this tournament quality field, and what's actually going to be funded by Aurora's donation or gift. The city has critical, so that's going to fall to the city then, the taxpayers, to pay for the rest of it. The city has critical service needs that may otherwise not get met if it develops these funds to the butts in development. Or the other alternative is that the tournament quality fields, the drainage, the lights, the additional five fields, the football fields, won't get built. And then that's not the promise that we've been led to believe is going to happen. So I'm asking you, council members, to make a fiscally responsible decision, the most fiscally responsible decision, which is to say that this is going to burden the city and its taxpayers at a time when it cannot afford it. I'm urging you to vote no, because it's going to cost the city and its taxpayers an awful lot of money and negatively impact all taxpayers in the community. And because the apocalyptic implications made by supporters of this plan are not logical that they would come to pass. Thank you. Thanks, John. We, we Everybody who is on the list has had a chance to speak. Is there anyone else in the crowd who would still like to uh, make some comments under the public hearing? Could people put their hands up if they're still interested? Okay. Um, I'm going to take the, uh, she already did, I think. the clipboard down here, and people can come up and, again, uh, sign in. She's already spoke, Mike. You can speak again if you've already spoken. So we just need people who haven't had a chance okay. to speak yet. And the people on deck can just take these chairs and we'll keep on rotating in the same manner. Just sign in, please. Thank you. Hi, Bob. Address then? 2320 East Mark Drive, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. My name is Maureen Kober, and yes, I am on the advisory board. Um, and I've been honest from the beginning that I do not support this. The reason I don't support it is 
I grew up in Sheboygan, and I get shaky public speaking, so bear with me. When I was a little girl, 29th Street was the end of Sheboygan. That's where it ended. The city grew, and guess what? The bus route grew. When I moved to where I am now, Taylor Drive was a gravel road. I watched St. Nicholas Hospital build from my front room window. St. Nicholas Hospital built on that land. Nobody opposed it because St. Nick's wasn't trying to destroy anything to build there. Aurora needs to expand. We all get that. Aurora came to Sheboygan. They bought Memorial Hospital. They knew it was outdated. They knew it was landlocked. And I'm sure their intention was to expand, and yes, they need to. But they don't need to expand on this, this specific location. I moved to my location when Taylor Drive was a gravel road. The mall wasn't built. Guess what? As the city grew and the mall was built, the bus route extended. If Aurora builds on the land that they own on Indiana Avenue, which they have refused to discuss at the Cooper School meeting, or any other land they own, bus routes will go there. The city's not going to leave them without a bus route if that's what they want, and we all know that. People struggled for years to get the field of dreams to be a reality. They fundraised, they worked, and they got it. And now you want to destroy it? Because Aurora says this is the only place they can build? I'm not that naive. There are other areas they can build. Aurora says they have no intention at this time to build a hospital, and they probably don't. But if you look at the land, they are planning to build a hospital there someday. Otherwise, why would they need a piece of land that large? I've seen the program, what they're proposing, and their surgery center does not take up that whole parcel of land. People say this is not a residential area. It is. I've lived there for over 30 years. I mean, it's ludicrous to build an outpatient surgery center one block from another outpatient surgery center. Aurora says they want to better serve the community, spread out the medical care. We have nothing on the south side. People don't just live in Sheboygan. They live in Plymouth. They live in Howard's Grove. They live in Cedar Grove. They, need Uts they live in Utsburg. These people all need care, too. Why should the only two places providing care be within a two-block area that doesn't serve the community to the best interest of the people who need that health care? Aurora provides quality health care. They will continue to do so. They do not need to build on this site. And I Excuse need you me? to respect us and vote no. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, my name is Robert Butcher. I live at 3020 North 6th Street. Um, there's always a saying that build it and they will come. But what would it bring to Sheboygan? As a soccer dad, when I go to, when I go to soccer tournaments to other cities, what I do is I spend, and I spend money. I'll, go to a, I'll get a hotel overnight. I'll go to mini marts, get gas, get um, snacks, drinks. And then after that, we'll go out to eat for restaurants. The next day, if there's a long gap between games, we'll go shopping and we'll visit other local businesses in the town. Having a soccer tournament here would bring over 1,500 people, and that's just kids alone. It also brings mothers and dads, grandparents, cousins, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. I say let those people spend their money here, money here and not somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Ruth Scherenbrock, 2227 North 34th Street in Sheboygan. You all look like my math class at 3 o'clock. <laughs> so what I say is please stay with us, Mrs. Scherenbrock, for a few more minutes. I come to you from a personal viewpoint. My four children worked that field since 2002. They worked their way through college, mowing that grass, weed whacking, creating those baseball fields, creating those soccer fields, painting lines, pulling sprinklers in the heat of the summer, the cold of the spring. They'd come home from a long day at work and say, Dad, Mom, come and see what I did today. They took such pride in that field. It is hurtful to me as a mother to hear you complain about the condition of the field of dreams. It's beautiful. 
There are people who come from all over the state and say to us and say to my children working in that field, wow, this is beautiful. We have family come from Germany and say to us, you can play on this beautiful field for free? Will that happen when you build club sports on the south side? As far as the question about raising money, my kids play soccer, baseball, football, swim, all kinds of sports. They're all letter winners. We went, yes, we went and spent money, but people came here and spent money as well. Those tournaments, we worked those concession stands. We saw what happened. Please reconsider what you are deciding right now to say no. Keep our field of dreams, the pride that people have put in that field, the memories that people have created in that field, and now, God bless me, I have grandchildren that say, can we go to Grandma's Park? What am I going to say to them when they see bulldozers and diggers digging up that field that their mom and dad worked on tirelessly to work their way through college? Thank you. Go ahead. I am uh, Ted Gmini, North. 6467 Birchtree Road, Plymouth, Wisconsin. I represent the Northeast Wisconsin Building Construction Trade Council. We have 9,000 members that I represent. This is an important project for all of us in this community. I understand change is not going to be easy for anybody, but it is important. If we could imagine Sheboygan without change, where would we be today? So I got a little letter here I want to read to you, and thank you for your time. The Northeast Wisconsin Building and Construction Trade Council is a proud <laughs> supporter of Aurora proposed for the new patient surgery center. The medical office building in Sheboygan, we believe that the long-term community benefit of this project is very exciting. The proposal will stimulate the local economy. The new facility will bring good paying jobs to our community, private, provide a, the infrastructure to serve the long-term health needs of Sheboygan residents and it's projected to generate an additional $200,000 in annual property taxes. There will be more than 400 local construction jobs created over the lifetime of this entire project, and the new medical facilities and sporting <coughs> fields are potentially economic drivers to spur future growth for the community. The investment into creating a tournament-quality sports facility will further define Sheboygan, as a regional destination for tourism. Our local business communities will flourish with these new dollars. Most importantly, our members living here, they are raising families in Sheboygan and the surrounding communities better access to high quality health care, new youth sports facilities, and new drivers for a more vibrant economic, economic, economy. Excuse me are in the best interest of their families. Aurora has proposed a forward-looking plan that is beneficial to our community. The Northeast Wisconsin Building and Construction Train Council endorses this project and encourages our community leaders to commit their support. Thank you. Hold on just a second, I'll stop the clock. Okay, go ahead. My name is Laura Miller, 565 Plaza Lane, Plymouth, Wisconsin. I am an Aurora employee and proud to say that I'm an Aurora employee. In 2002, I purchased a house in Plymouth, Wisconsin. When we looked out our window, we looked into a beautiful field. It was wonderful. And Aurora purchased some land and built the clinic there. So when we look out our window now, we see um, a clinic. At first, I was a little disappointed because we did see this beautiful land. But one day when I was pulling in my subdivision, I found my seven-year-old laying on the ground in the middle of the road and my eight-year-old knocking on a neighbor's door. My seven-year-old had fallen off his bike and broke his arm. I pulled over. I was in my car, pulled over, scooped him off the ground, and within five minutes, I was at a facility that he could get care. This, as a mom, is way more important to me than looking at a field 
he was able to get the specialty care that he needed for his arm, the pain medication that he needed for what he was going through. And that, to me, is very important. An employee of, um, as an employee of Aurora Sheboygan Memorial, a labor and delivery nurse, we are busting at the seams. We need this space. We need the space to take care of our patients. We love our patients. They are a vital part of our lives. I've been up since 4 a.m. taking care of patients, and I'm proud to say that I'm an Aurora employee, and I really think that we need to move forward. Thank you. Go ahead. My name's Dale Carls. I live in Sheboygan at 2503 Pershing. Um, so obviously there's been a lot of discussion here tonight, and uh, it's obviously a hot topic. I think if you were to look at this logically and from the perspective of a citizen in, this, in Sheboygan, I personally am in support of the center because Looking at the field of dreams, there's not a lot of opportunities to to grow or, or to improve that facility unless you spend a lot of money to do so. Um, I recently moved to Sheboygan a few years ago, and I was a long-term resident of Sheboygan Falls. Um, growing up in Sheboygan Falls, I had a lot of opportunities as a kid to, <clears throat> to be in sports and be involved with those kinds of things, and I'd like to have those those same opportunities specifically for my younger children that I'm not sure they're going to have those opportunities without the support of Aurora. So my expectations and priorities as a parent of a child going into youth sports is that there's a safe, permanent, designated area for them to play. And uh, as I stated, Sheboygan Falls always provided that for me. <clears throat> And moving to Sheboygan, obviously, I'd like to see that same thing. <coughs> Last year, the youth, the Sheboygan Youth Program joined the Traveling League, giving our local youth a chance to play kids in areas such as Manitowoc and Green Bay, as well as a team in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. I had the opportunity to, in, to enjoy great facilities while I was in school. Um, I'm hoping that the council will recognize this need and increase incredible opportunity <coughs> given to us by the Butson family and as well as Aurora. I don't believe there's a lot of health care companies out there that would give this support to the community. And if they are to move outside of Sheboygan, there's a significant amount of revenue that the city will lose. Um, so in, in addition to that, obviously there's many tax benefits. Um, as a taxpaying citizen, so I see nothing but good that can come out of adding the center and I guess I'm a little confused as to why um, Some folks wouldn't be in favor of it. I understand those that live in the area and Live in that specific residential area could be an issue for you um, <clears throat> However, Aurora has agreed to pay for the the additional facilities and moving this uh, this location. So, as a taxpaying citizen, I'm in favor of it, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken who wishes to be heard? could fill it out after you're done, sir. Okay, you are set to go. Hi, I'm, I'm Dave Gravener. I'm the president of Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center. I live at 3618 North 6th Street. I'm, my heart um, is challenged by the conversation today because I think what we have done was meant to be pure in supporting the community. And I, you know, I, I feel uh, for the neighbors and that were, were creating pain uh, for their, you know, for the hardship that this is creating for them. I want you to know, though, that, you know, how, how we got to this decision. 
is this decision was a local decision. It wasn't a corporate decision. It was made by our local people that live in this area. And as we, as we talk through Plan G, as we talked about, there were many plans before that. And we considered sites out of the city. We considered sites we owned. We considered other sites. And we were really challenged with how do we make sure we don't live through the issues that we've had with for the last 25 years, not being able to expand because of con confined space to meet the community needs, not our own, to meet the community needs, with um, how do we make sure that we are making this decision, this 75-year, 100-year decision for this community that's in the interest of this community. So I've, I've had a number of caregivers come to me. Many of them have supported this. Some of them don't. And, and what I feel good about is the fact that, that I can stand here and tell you as a community that we, this is pure in how we're trying to serve the community. And it's, it, we're not going to lose $86 million investment in our community. Uh, we will have to explore options if this doesn't work. And that isn't meant to be a threat. I think it's important that you consider all of the perspectives. But I want you to understand we will not lose the queue to building this center. We will build this center somewhere in the county. And, um, and if you choose that, that it's not in the city, uh, in this site, we'll have to go back to square one. But we're going to need to do that in a timely way so we don't get out of the queue. It's important that we do that in order to meet the community needs. So I want you to just understand that. Thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead. Uh, my name is Scott Schaefer. I'm president of Sheboygan Youth Football. Um, I speak as a taxpayer. I live at 2503 Rolling Meadows Drive. I was born at St. Nicholas Hospital in 1967. Uh, sorry, Memorial, but I was born there. Uh, room 122. They're no longer there. They moved and built a new hospital. All right. The police station right here is no longer a police station. They moved. That's uh, called progress. I'm pro-jobs and pro-children. The mall isn't the same mall that they built, and they're probably going to tear it down soon. All right, that's called progress. The quarry where I played as a kid and swam, it's not the same quarry. I don't take my kids there anymore. I used to hang out at the lake shore uh, with my friends with cars, and the whole thing was lined with cars up and down the street. We all partied there, had fun, good, clean fun. It's no longer available to us. All right, it's a park, I guess you'd call it. It's beautiful. But the kids can't, can't hang out there to change. Um, you know, my point is, I feel bittersweet. Who wants to lose a park? I get that. But the Field of Dreams isn't what it was when it was first built, too. You have sentimental value there? I get it. Neighbors aren't the same neighbors that were there 25 years ago. Not all of you. Some of you are. But I bet in 10 years, many of you won't be there either. Not because there's not a park there but because you'll move. Things happen. Maybe some people get older. I don't know, but things will change. That's part of life. The, the big thing, you know, that my, my point is we're missing out on a great opportunity. If your vote here is because some neighbors don't want to live across from a big, gaudy hospital or, or medical facility, that's a bad reason to vote. You need to vote for the whole and what's good for the community. Sheboygan Youth Football supports having a place to play much quicker, and I support the soccer program as well. I don't necessarily support getting rid of a park, but what they're putting on the table is a far cry from what we're going to see next year if we don't do this. It's going to take a huge commitment from our whole community to make this happen, but without Aurora stepping up to the table, this won't happen. There's nobody that's going to give us seven, eight, nine million dollars, five million dollars, whatever you want to call the varying accounts of what, what's being put on the table. That's not going to happen next year without this project. It might happen in 10 years, all right, but in the meantime, we're all going to fumble and, and play in the, in the areas that we have to play in. And in my case, our organization has a lousy facility. I bet Kiwanis Park was a beautiful park back in the day. It's not very nice now. And, and I challenge anybody that says it is. 
I don't think the city spent the dime down there in years. Um, I just want to say Aurora, uh, I, I support Aurora personally and uh, look forward to whatever they bring to the table at that park. Excuse and me. Thank you thank very you. much. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion Eric, can we take a five-minute break? Uh, I guess I'd just like to uh, thank everyone for coming tonight to express your opinions. You've all been uh, been very polite and sometimes funny, and we appreciate uh, all of your, your your thoughts tonight. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask for a five-minute recess. Very good. We'll uh, reconvene at uh, 35 minutes too. Twenty-five minutes too. That was your fastest second on record, by the way. Congratulations! Very long training. Come on, Steve. <laughs> it's a nail biter. All right. <laughs> Missing Don. He's coming home now for a couple days. Please take your seats. Okay, I think we have everybody back in the chambers. Uh, the next item um, on our agenda is the consent agenda. That's items 3.2 through 3.23. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? John? As a, oh, here we go. It just popped up. Let's make okay. It longer. Thank you. Fifteen eyes. Oops. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <laughs> given the fact that we've got a lot of people here that are um, here for a specific issue, I'm going to, if it pleases the council, to ask to move some documents forward and, and have the discussion. Um, first would be uh, 7.1 and 8.10, uh, uh, um, and I would ask to pull those, or ask to pull those forward. Second. Okay, those items are before us then. Uh, 7.1 is an RO number 266 of 1415 by the city clerk submitting a protest petition to stop the rezoning of the property at 3306 Seaman Avenue. And do you want to take 8.10 uh, yes. at the same yep, one? Take them together. Okay, 8.10 uh, is an RO by the city clerk submitting a petition on March 27th, the second submission protesting the amendment to rezone the Field of Dreams property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue. Okay, to proceed? Yes. Um, I would move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Do we need a roll call? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, next, I'd like to bring forward 7.2, um, which is, uh, I'll, uh, Mr. Mayor, just to pull 7.2 forward. Okay, item 7.2 is RO number 265 of 1415 by the City Planning Commission. To whom was referred General Ordinance number 47 of 1415 by Alderman Vanderweel and Van Akron amending the City of Sheboygan's future land use map 
of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located at 3306 Salmon Avenue from public parks and open space to institutional and community facilities classification and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to accept and file and put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that the city attorney just give a, a brief explanation as to what a land use classification is and what result that has on the property and, and if that has any, I guess, effect on the zoning proposal or any buildings that would go on there in the future. City attorney. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, the uh, comprehensive plan statute requires that any rezone be, con be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Currently, the proposed rezone is not consistent with the existing uh, land use on the comprehensive plan. So the proposal is to amend the comprehensive plan uh, to uh, institutional and community facilities classification, which uh, would be consistent with the proposed rezone. As far as the vote, uh, I've had some questions about that. Uh, the vote on the uh, amendment of the comprehensive plan under the statutes calls for a majority vote of the members elect of the council. And it defines the members elect of the council to be all the members of the council that are elected minus those that have died, those that have been removed from office, and those that have resigned. So with Alderman Matichek having resigned, the members elect of the council would be 15. So a majority of that uh, number would be eight for passage of the amendment to the comprehensive plan. Thank you for the, the response. Any other questions on the matter? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if we vote in the affirmative of this, in, in the affirmative to pass this, uh, does this give the right for the city to change the zoning uh, on the Field of Dreams property as there, as we're going to be voting on in document 7 3. City Attorney? It's not, uh, it doesn't give the city the right to rezone, but uh, if you uh, amend the comprehensive plan to a use that's consistent with the proposed rezone, then if you act on the rezone in, in favor of the rezone, it would be consistent with the comprehensive plan, which was, is what the statute requires. But if we pass, if we pass document 7.2. If you pass 7.2, you're not obligated to pass the rezone. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. Any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on 7.2. Eleven eyes, three no's, and one abstention. Motion passes. Um, Alderman Hammond. Uh, where are we at here? There it is. I think uh, we'd like to pull forward now 7.3. Okay, 7.3 is our own number 254 of 1415 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 46 of 1415 by Alderman Vanderweel and Van Akron. The RO number and RO number uh, 243 of 1415 by the City Clerk amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map the, of this, uh, um, the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the use district <coughs> classification of properties located at 3306 Salmon Avenue from class SR5 suburban residential to class SO suburban office classification. This recommends that the attached substitute general ordinance number 46 of 1415 which conditions the zoning amendment upon the following. Number one, the purchase and sale of the former Fields of Dreams property from the Sheboygan Area School District to Aurora Healthcare or related entity for development of medical and office facilities on or before December 31st of 2016. 
And number two, the future land use map of the city of Sheboygan comprehensive plan being amendment, amended to a classification consistent with the proposed rezone. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file and put the uh, substitute ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, um, uh, we've heard a lot of impassioned viewpoints on both sides of this issue, and I appreciate and quite candidly thank those on both sides um, for their viewpoints, their arguments, and uh, uh, especially those that have conducted themselves in a, in a very professional and dignified manner, as you mentioned earlier. I just want to point out a few things that you know, I believe, um, and again, I understand the passion on, on both sides of it, um, quite honestly. But first, I just want to talk about the benefits to the city. You know, as elected officials, um, oftentimes we're asked, um, as somebody indicated, to make uh, decisions that may benefit the overall community but be um, inconvenient for, for some. But benefits are, um, and these are, are relatively new numbers, I know many of the council haven't seen them yet, um, but we're looking at uh, $320,000 of new property tax um, on $12.3 million of uh, taxable development. We're looking at a, a new sports facility for our youth and also for our tourism. I want to read an article that uh, apropos was in a recent uh, March 15th um, magazine called American City and County. Um, not sure quite what, where this is out of, but when measuring its impact, sports tourism includes dining accommodations, entertainment spend from individuals who would not otherwise be present in the community. The sector is expanding exponentially. The sports travel market is the fastest growing segment of the travel industry. It's the only segment of the travel industry not to decline in any quarter within the recession. 27% of all trips taken inside the United States were directly related to an organized sporting event. Um, so, again, this project would have further benefit than just putting new soccer fields on a different location. The cost, um, to say there's been bad information out there is kind of an understatement. Um, you know, as we discussed in, in earlier meetings, um, looking at the funding, the proposal that Rettler put together showed about um, uh, several million dollars of, of, of infrastructure put into this. The piece that would be phase one, um, as many of you guys are aware, and I'll just reiterate, um, assuming I can uh, get to it quickly, would be the completion of the five tournament grade fields, parking on the north side, retention pond, site prep utilities. Um, there was no mention in any of the conversations about lighting. That's not part of the phase one. Um, there's no mention of completion or completing the whole field. That was not part of phase one. The budget that we put together, the numbers that Aurora is providing, the other um, stakeholders, city and Lakeshore United, meet the budget numbers. Lakeshore United and the other entities have committed, once this thing is off the ground and built, to continue the fundraising that's needed to, can, to build out the, the second portion of the field or the south side of the field. We never had a pipe dream that this thing was going to be completed with the Aurora money, meaning the entire project so that doesn't get taken out of context. We knew from the beginning, I've been outlined to the council, that phase one, the north side of the field, the five fields, amended soils, parking lots, retention ponds, um, utilities would be part of the phase one. Lakeshore United um, and other stakeholders would take the ball from there and grow the rest of the facility. Many people have made the argument, could this all get done at some point? And absolutely. You know, many projects in this town have started, um, but it would be at least 10 years out before they could raise the money necessary to do what we're able to do in a short period of time here. People indicate that there's no support from the community. Um, I would challenge that notion. Um, <clears throat> granted, I do live on the south side. Um, I've gotten many emails of support from individuals, business, labor, um, and at last count it was at least three to one um, of emails. People, many people will say, well, those are Aurora employees. Well, Aurora employees are citizens of the city too. They live here, they pay taxes, their vote counts just as everybody else's does. 
We got an email that indicated that this isn't just a neighborhood issue, it's a city issue, and that's absolutely correct. Um, this facility that Aurora is looking to put in will benefit the community as a whole. It'll benefit the tax base and, of course, the facilities that are being rebuilt um, on the east side um, of Taylor Drive and also on the south side um, will benefit um, youth and sports in the city. So I believe we are doing what's in the best interest of the city as a whole. The other concern I have is what is the message to other developers, other people that are looking to come into the city of Sheboygan and say this looks like a good place to build. Many of you have seen the um, press release from Meyer Foods. Those are the types of development we want to keep coming in. We don't want to send the message that not my backyard is the way you know, we do business. Some people have talked about building a, you know, building a hospital there. I don't know what's going to happen 75 years, nor does anybody else. You know, we've got many people that um, you know, pretend to be you know, site developers, tourism experts, um, urban planning experts. You know, none of us have a crystal ball what's going to happen in 75 years. Maybe uh, former Alderman Lewandowski is correct. Maybe the tornado will come and take out the entire corridor. Who knows? But again, at the end of the day, all we know is what we have today. The co concerns that Aurora will not fulfill their part of the agreement. You know, there are many covenants inside of the agreement that they must meet before they can start construction. And any one of those points, if they don't fulfill those uh, covenants, the project, that may not be the re light, right, correct legal term, if they don't fulfill those obligations, <coughs> the sale doesn't go through. We didn't make the decision to sell this property. That was done between Aurora and the school district. Our, de our determination is to determine whether or not what goes on that site is a reasonable um, development for that piece of land. We, we're not here to debate the merits of whether or not Aurora should have bought it or the school district should have sold it. Our job obligation is to determine whether or not what goes on that site is a reasonable development for that site um, and for that area. So I'm going to be supporting this project um, because I think it's good for the city, I think it's good for the uh, taxpayers, I think it's good for um, children, and I think 10 years from now we look back at this like we've done when the Field of Dreams was put in and many neighbors around the Field of Dreams had opposition to that, and now many of them are standing up here saying what a great thing it is. We'll look back at this 10 years from now, and I think the same feeling will be true. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tonight we have a rezoning proposal in front of us, and I think I'm going to start my comments there. I'm standing up tonight um, in opposition to this rezoning, and we'll be voting no to the rezoning proposal. I'd like to, I guess, start with the rezoning proposal. Um, the property itself is in my district, and I've certainly gotten a great deal of response from the people in my district, as I'm sure everybody has. And uh, the response in my district, the neighborhood being affected, is overwhelmingly in opposition to this proposal. Um, rezoning should be about the neighborhood being affected. It should be about the land that's being rezoned and what's going to be built there. We've had a lot of uh, rezoning opportunities in the 40 plus years that I've been here, and I've never seen one as contentious as this. And that alone tells me something, that the neighborhood and the community that's being affected is strongly opposed to this, and we've seen that. They've taken the strongest steps possible to stop this rezoning and to stop the destruction of their park. I've heard from a lot of people in the neighborhood and in my district, and, and there's three common themes that I hear from continually. Um, first off, they're obviously strongly opposed to losing their park. They, they take pride in their park, they cherish their park, they consider it a centerpiece of their community, of their neighborhood. Um, that's the first thing. Secondly, they're opposed to living in a construction zone for who knows how long to build the proposed surgery center or whatever future plans are coming. They have concerns about <clears throat> living in that zone just as I would if I lived there. Um, the third being that they're opposed for trading off their park and having that forced upon them for living next to a medical facility and all of that that, that brings with it. Um, just like any other medical facility, traffic, parking, whatever comes with um, Aurora's future plans, they have concerns about that, and I share those concerns. Um, I guess I ask you to take a moment and think about if you lived in that neighborhood. If you bought a house there, you built a house there, and you lived there, and the centerpiece of your neighborhood was this park, how would you feel if government entities, ourselves included, were forcing these changes upon you? Again, 
The neighbors in that neighborhood have taken the strongest steps possible to show that they are against this. And I've never seen that in the time that I've been here. In other rezonings, I've never seen such a, an outcry as, as we've seen here tonight. Um, I think it shows that the neighborhood being affected is not on board with these changes. So I ask you to put yourself in their shoes for a minute and ask you how you would feel if these were, changes would be forced upon you. If the council decides to move forward with this rezoning, they are doing it against the will of the neighborhood, against the will of the people. Again, they've taken the strongest um, <coughs> steps possible to stop this. I'd also like to, I guess, discuss the uh, Aurora proposal. We've heard a lot from Aurora, Aurora employees, um, administrators, directors. We've heard a lot about their needs. We've heard a lot about the need of a new center, the needs for the community, and, and I don't dispute any of those at all. And in fact, none of the people in my district have disputed any of those. Um, I think Aurora has a need to build a new facility. I think Aurora has a need to expand. Again, I don't dispute any of those. But we've heard here tonight from Director Grabner, I've heard from Director Grabner in past meetings, that if this proposal does not go through, they have plans to move on to other <laughs> options. And I urge them to do so. I urge us to turn down this zoning and I urge them to look to other plans. I'm glad to hear that they're not gonna leave the community. I'm glad to hear that they're gonna build their facility so that they meet the needs of the community. And it kind of reassures me that I'm doing the right thing. Because we talk about a win-win opportunity. That would be a win-win opportunity. A neighborhood doesn't get destroyed, a facility gets built, and we have the same opportunity on the south side as we have here today. Those are the things that we need to think about. Again, it goes back to zoning and rezoning and about a neighborhood that's gonna be affected. And I'm not gonna support destroying a neighborhood to help a facility get built that can be built somewhere else. Do they, would they like to build at this site? Yes, I, that's, that's clear and that's obvious. Do they need to build at this site? No. They can build their facility somewhere else, and I'm glad to hear that, that they're going to. So I urge you to vote no against the rezoning so we can move forward. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think something was lost along the way because I believe Dr. Gravener actually stated that most likely they would be looking to go outside of the city. I may have misheard that. Alderman Van Akron may have misheard it differently, but I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. So there's no guarantee that they're going to stay in the, in, in the city. In regards to the questions about um, the, the, the neighborhood, or actually the statement, the, the neighborhood being destroyed, I think that's a bit apocalyptic to use a word from um, the, the hearing. The neighborhood isn't being destroyed. A building is being put up in the center of a very large green space. I, I think that's a bit extreme. I'm going to get back to my actual script that I typed earlier today. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit personal here uh, in the beginning because that, that, that's, where, that's where we have been for a while. And um, at an early age, we were taught to turn the other cheek um, when others offend us. Today, I received an email, and strictly out of principle, I can't really ignore it, and I'm not going to. I've got big shoulders, but still, I, I'm going to bring this up because it illustrates the type of, I'm going to use the word, emotion that we have been battling since this project started. In this email, the sender, make, sender makes a claim that either you have been conned or you don't have the guts to say no because you are afraid of being kicked out of the city club. The sender also makes a claim that citizens are saying that anyone that supports this project are puppets of the mayor and Amodio. My immediate response is know your audience. This is where I get personal. <coughs> I've served in the Marine Corps for over nine years. I completed two combat tours in Iraq. I've been shot at. I've had mortar rounds dropped on me. I've even had a mortar on land on the roof of the building I was sleeping in. I've had the pleasure of manning a machine gun on a Humvee that rolled into a canal in Iraq. So my point is, for anyone to believe that the mayor of Sheboygan or the city administrator could strong arm me into voting a certain way is ridiculous. And now I'm going to get back to the topic at hand. I will admit I've supported this project from the beginning because why wouldn't a reasonable, logical person not support it? However, as an elected official, I have to weigh the wants and the needs of the entire community. I have been accused of not representing the community because I do not support the vocal minority. We have the pleasure of living in a representative republic where elected officials are voted into office in order to vote on behalf of their constituents. It's our job to make decisions based on facts, our beliefs, and those of our constituents. That is what this country was founded on. I support this project because of the benefits and because of the overwhelming positive feedback that I have received. 
And just interjecting some numbers tonight, I counted 30 um, residents, citizens, Aurora employees um, talking in favor of this project and 17 voting against it, or speaking against it. If you take the Aurora employees out, it's a 50-50 split. And I do believe that's probably where the city is sitting, 50-50. As one of the earlier speakers said, no matter how we vote tonight, we're going to upset somebody. And that's the nature of government. It really is. We're not going to please everybody. It's not possible. And it's kind of not reasonable to think, it's unreasonable to think otherwise. We need to move past all of the mistruths, the misinformation, and even some of the blatant lies and look at the bigger picture. The project as a whole has too many positive aspects not to support it. Our children get to play on brand new tournament grade fields. And this is ultimately what it really has to come down to. It, this is about the children. And I don't really care if I get ostracized for saying this, but adults in this situation need to take a back seat. This is about the kids. These are the fields that our kids play on. And I've seen the fields. They are in terrible condition. I just drove by again today because I wanted to see, I wanted to see the, the muddy fields. There's this giant depression. Um, if you're looking west at the field on Taylor Drive, there's a giant depression right on the edge of the field. How is that safe? I don't know. I'm not an expert on sports and sports injuries, but the field is very uneven. You can see it from the road. It's not a good field. It may have been one time, but it's not anymore. So continuing on, our children get to play on the brand new tournament grade fields. Aurora builds and expands on our already existing medical corridor to support the growing aging population, and not to mention the other aspects of the medical community that have been spoken about already tonight. And then lastly, the city is going to benefit from an estimated, I think it's $325,000 now in tax revenue. We've kept hearing the number $200,000. It's actually been increased to over $300,000. That's pretty significant. And then jobs. There's going to be new jobs created out of this project. Sheboygan is in a good place right now. We are seeing progress. We're seeing it everywhere. We have businesses opening. We have businesses expanding. There are jobs available. Go on Wisconsin JobNet. There's over, I think, 700 jobs right now within Sheboygan. Good things are happening. This project will help facilitate the future of Sheboygan. To kill this project is, in effect, stopping economic development. Economic development is vital to the sustainability and the future of our city. I know I ran on the promise of doing what I can to help economic development, four years ago when I, when I walked into this, um, this chamber. This is our ch chance to help facilitate that growth. We don't get many votes here in, inside these chambers, and this is one we have direct impact on. So my f for my fellow aldermen who, chose, or who are going to choose to vote against this, I've already heard Alderman Van Acker and his reasons for, for, for voting against it, and I can understand it. He lives and represents that district. But for the others that are going to vote against us, please remember what you're voting against. You're voting against new fields for our children, expanded fields for our children, a new surgery center for our aging population, additional tax revenue, like I said, over $300,000. We all know the budget shortfalls we have coming up. We've, we've, the garbage fee has been sp uh, spoken of tonight. This could take a big chunk out of that. And approximately 30 new jobs. And what are you going to vote against for? I don't know. I would really like to hear everyone that's going to vote against it to get up and say their piece. The whole not in my backyard mentality doesn't make sense to me. I sympathize, however, and understand why the neighbors are unhappy about this move. But you can say the same thing about any development in the past. Times change. Buildings go up. Buildings come down. Things keep moving. Change is inevitable and change is necessary. And it's Quite convenient today at lunch today, I heard a quote that I, I've heard before, but I haven't heard in a long time, but that's how I'm going to end at least this part. I'm not going to guarantee I'm not going to get up and speak again. <laughs> um, but it's pretty simple. I may screw it up, but I apologize. But how I heard it was everybody loves progress, but nobody likes change. Thank you for those comments. Moving on to Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a question about the project itself. And again, we wouldn't be here if the school district wasn't in a $2 million hole. Okay, I just wanted to say that, and I know why they have to sell the property. Um, but since they're going to be, this neighborhood's going to be changing, and they're going to move two field, two soccer fields and two ball diamonds across the street. 
I, I need some reassurances as to if these are going to be better. They have to be better than what they have now. And who's the, um, the authority as far as who's going to determine that when these fields are completed and they start uh, the project across the street? Uh, There's got to be a timetable. They're not supposed to start the building until these fields are in. Uh, they're not supposed to go on the west side of the uh, – uh, do the project, the, the surgical center, till these fields are all in, right? If there's and no objection, I'd like to open up the floor to David Grabner to expound upon that. David, would you? If, is there any objection? David, please step forward to the microphone. You need some help? Yeah. Bring him along. Um, actually, if I may, I, I'd like to have Jim uh, uh, Kleinfeld from Bolt, who has been our developer on the project, speak to uh, the specifics around how the field will be enhanced. Very good. <clears throat> yes, uh, again, I'm Jim Kleinfeld with the Bolt Company. Um, so we are uh, working with Aurora both as a, in a developer role and also uh, in a construction manager role. Uh, in terms of the, the fields uh, that are moving over to what we refer to as the East Parcel, so across Taylor Drive uh, from the current Field of Dreams, uh, we'll be relocating two uh, high school baseball fields uh, and two high school soccer fields. Um, as part of the purchase and sale agreement, uh, Aurora is taking the risk to build those uh, to the specs that are, are outlined in the contract. Uh, and the sale doesn't go through uh, unless the school district is satisfied that we've met those obligations. Does that answer your question, Alderman Heidemann? Yeah, partly. What about any type of cont uh, contamination? Is there any liability to the city that we're going to have to do a, uh, spend any additional tax dollar to be able to let, have that project go forward? No, uh, that's, uh, we have studied that issue. We understand it, and that is Aurora's responsibility uh, to take care of it as part of the project, and it's, it's budgeted for in, in part of the project. Anything else, Alderman Heideman? That's it. Thank you very much. Moving on, Alderman Bellinger, you can step down then. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this body is charged with making a decision on whether to rezone the Taylor Drive parcel to accommodate Aurora's future, future plans or keeping the zoning the same, which in essence would kill the plan. Both sides have lobbied us. We have heard from the neighbors directly affected by this, Aurora personnel, and other citizens both in the city and the surrounding area, and we must make a decision. I'm going to base my decision on what I believe is in the best interest of the city in the city's future. I take this matter very seriously, and I've attended most meetings related to the subject matter. I've also received numerous phone calls, voicemails and emails, and I responded to each and every one of them. And uh, so I, I just want to make that point as well. Um, this issue is complicated because it's got numerous parcels of land that are part of the plan that will be impacted. The complication has resulted in misinformation being spread relating to this issue, and I would like to address uh, a couple of these. Uh, number one is Aurora is going to build a hospital on this site, and I've seen the plans. I've heard this from more than two or three people. In, in each instance that I've heard it, I've asked, please forward me those plans, and I've never seen any plans. I've met personally with Mr. Gravener on numerous occasions. I am the alderman for the first district in Memorial Hospital. It's two blocks away from my house and in my district. My concern is uh, if they're going to build a new hospital, I want to know about it because I want to know what's going to happen to the existing facility. <coughs> um, on every occasion that I've directly asked the question, Mr. Gravener's been forthright in saying uh, we plan out 10 years in advance. In that window right now, there is no plan to abandon the hospital, relocate the hospital, or build a new hospital in, in Sheboygan. So I, I want to make that abundantly clear to everybody. That's a lot of information that was even stated here this evening. Um, the second is, is that there's an implied assumption that should we decline the rezoning request, that Aurora will build somewhere else within the city limits. Alderman Van Akron, you know, he had the interpretation that they're staying in the city no matter what we do. Um, you know, Alderman Carlson said he thinks that, that that's not as clear. Um, I've got something directly from, 
from Aurora that everybody was, was passed out. And, it, it, and the question that is answered is, does Aurora have an alternative building plan if this proposal should be denied? And the answer is, Aurora will have no other choice but to look outside the city of Sheboygan if this proposal is not approved. So, and, and I think Mr. Gravener has made that clear to us tonight. If we let this opportunity go, then you know, everything that is attached along with it goes with it. There's no guarantee that should we decline this offer or decline to rezone that they're going to build in an alternative location within the city limits. And um, my, my third um, issue that I want to touch on is that the south side of Sheboygan is the preferred location for any future health care related facility. And this is the most ridiculous assumption of all. Um, I don't recall any public outcry when Columbia St. Mary's came to town and located on Taylor Drive. What about Prevea when they arrived in town? Was there an outcry when they located on Taylor Drive? Or what about when Dr. Campbell built Contessa Spa and Surgery Suite? You know, I didn't hear any complaints or cries from the neighbors, you know, that this should be built on the south side. What are you thinking? You know, the south side needs this. So I haven't heard any of this, you know, up until this project comes up. And if you look at any community of any size, there's usually a medical corridor where all the competitors are located. You look at Green Bay, you look at Milwaukee, you, you look at Appleton, that's the way, the nature of, of things that happen. And I think that's been addressed by several people tonight, too, during the public forum. And the benefits of the Aurora plan are there's going to be 30 to 37 new jobs for the outpatient surgery center, two new baseball fields, two new full-size soccer fields located on the east side of Taylor Drive. All parties that were originally, that originally donated to the original Field of Dreams will continue to be memorialized on the east side. Off-street parking on the east side of Taylor Drive to serve the new fields. Aurora will, will not start that de the development on the west side of Taylor Drive until the fields are completed on the east side. And the gentleman from Bolt just confirmed that. Aurora has offered neighbors that are affected by this to participate in an advisory board as this project progresses. I think that's a very generous, um, you know, um, hand, you know, an olive branch lifted to the neighbors to, to address their issues. In Aurora's $5 million, don $5 million donation will fund the east size relocation of the Field of Dreams as well as the first phase of the Butson Farm development. Aurora will provide um, an additional $200,000. Now I hear tonight from Alderman Hammond that it's $300,000 in, in tax revenue per year. Uh, we've heard from Lakeshore United Soccer or football that they're in full support of this plan. Sheboygan Youth Football is in full support of this plan. The needs of the baseball community have been addressed. Um, and there's between 37 and 40 net new acres of green space that result from this. Upgraded sports complex, Butts and Farms will bring in added economic impact from tournaments, hotel room stays, gas, groceries, restaurants. Uh, and, and lastly, the image of Sheboygan will be enhanced with visitors coming to our city and using our tournament grade fields. And, you know, something that um, Alderman Hammond mentioned before, too, is, is that um, in the future, should we decline this, you know, what is going to be the perception of, of development? Um, I think one of the state mottos is, is that we're open for business. Um, you know, certainly I would like to think Sheboygan is open for business as well. And certainly Aurora has partnered um, in a fashion with the school district, um, you know, in the city to, you know, really enhance and upgrade and, and advance the, the athletic fields that are existing right now. So I will be voting to rezone the Taylor Drive parcel so this plan can move forward. I truly believe that this is in the best interest of the city now and in the future. I understand the neighborhood, the neighbor's concerns and emotions, and I've taken that into account prior to making my decision. The greater good is served by this body voting to rezone. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else wishing to speak? Alderman Donahue. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, just uh, four points. Um, it's really important to me that we correctly identify this, um, the Field of Dreams, as not a public park belonging to the city of Sheboygan. And it's easy to, to, to mix those concepts up, and we can't do that because it's not true. <coughs> This is a recreational field, like the North High football field, 
like the Horace Mann soccer field, like the South High football field. This is a school district recreational field. It's where kids play sports. <coughs> When we're talking, and I, I just think that's important because I, I know Sheboygan values its public parks, and I think the, the discussion around Sheridan Park really confirms that. This is not a city park, and saying it or confabulating it doesn't make it so. It's not a city park. It just isn't. It's not a city park. Now, we do have uh, information about, well, you're t talking about zoning public parks and open spaces. Let's talk about open spaces because this is, in fact, an open space. And there is no zoning classification, which is Sheboygan Area School District recreational field or park facility zoning. Because if there were, then we could be amending that. But there isn't. It's parks and open spaces. And it is an open space. So that's just a piece that has been irritating me. So I thought I would just bring that up. Um, second. Um, I think Alderman uh, Van Akron spoke eloquently uh, on a number of issues. I take issue with the fact that zoning is only for the people who surround the area that is being affected. Zoning is a real key piece of how a city sees itself, how it sees itself developing, how it sees its citizens living, and it is a citywide decision, and that's why we're all talking about it tonight. Now. We talk about NIMBYs, not in my backyard people. I would challenge our fellow Alder people here. If it hasn't happened to you, you really don't understand the emotion. If you live in a place and somebody wants to build something across the street that you don't like, no matter what people say to you about the fact that it's economically feasible, it's reasonable, it's going to make Sheboygan open for business, it's a really great idea for our kids, or whatever it is, we don't, if it isn't happening to us, we can sympathize, but we can't empathize. So I understand, even though I can't particularly empathize because my house is not across the street from the proposed facility or from Field of Dreams, we shouldn't discount in any way, shape, or form the emotion that brings neighbors to want to preserve this open space, and I don't. But that's not where the discussion ends, and it can't end there, because if it ended there, nothing would ever happen anywhere, anyhow, if the neighbors didn't want it. And that is a really important point. Now, third point. I've had lots of telephone calls and emails. I haven't looked at my emails today, and I, <laughs> I hope I didn't get that email, because I haven't been in Iraq. <laughs> but I, um, and I, that sounded, you know what I mean. Um, uh, it really, you know, I have the, it, it feels almost Pollyanna-ish, but I have enjoyed, to some extent, um, the, the public discourse. You know, we all get discouraged. We can't get people to run for office. We can't get people interested in, in public affairs. And here we have real interest. I would say between emails and phone calls, the calls have been about half and half. Um, no one has been disrespectful, um, and I, people have gotten a little heated, and then, because like I've got this Irish blood, I've gotten a little heated too, but you know, in the end, you know, we all calm down, and, and the conversation is good, and it feels like citizenship to me. It feels like belonging. We belong to the city because we're taking an interest in what's going on, so that's a good deal. So even though my temper has risen from time to time, it's risen and it's fallen right back down. OK, so the breaking point is tonight, and I just can't shut up about this. I'm really angry about this lawyer's letter. For any of you who haven't made up your mind and you feel intimidated about this letter, that somehow you are in trouble because an open meetings complaint has been filed with the district attorney against the school district, do not be afraid. We have done nothing wrong here. This is, this is not fair play, and I am really upset. I like Attorney Basler. I think he's a very good lawyer. This, oops, <laughs> this is not fair. And so, and, and this will get dealt with in the course of time, but if anyone here is feeling like, gee, if I vote in favor of this, maybe they're going to file a complaint against me. Don't be afraid. 
We are in good shape here. We have immunity in general regarding legislative affairs. I have no idea. I didn't have time to look at the substance of this. I could have read it while people were talking, but I didn't want to do that. But my sense is, just based on my experience, we're doing fine here. But do not be intimidated. So we're back to the fact that we have that we live in a democracy, that we have competing interests here, that people have had the opportunity to fully discuss and air their concerns and their information on both sides. And we need to be thinking, in my view, about the city as a whole. And not, and again, not to discount the, the, the true emotions that people have. We need to think more than more than just the neighbors that surround Field of Dreams. I really urge all of us to be supportive, to be, all of us to vote yes on this, because I really do think we need to move forward. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boren. I didn't have anything, Mayor. Okay. <laughs> Your light's off now. Alderman Herman. First. Thank you, Mayor Vanderstein. I've gone back and forth on this five times. Of all the things that I've had to vote on since I joined this council, this is the toughest thing. I held a listening session on March 14th. I must have had 25, 30 people there. Not one of them wanted to talk about anything else except the field of dreams. I was this close to changing my vote and going forth. But my original idea was to be against it. And I'm going to stick with that. Lord Madonahue, I admire your passion. I admire all of your opinions and your views on this. I respect all of you. But I'm not going to vote to take that piece of property away from the people to the Field of Dreams people for 37 jobs. It just doesn't feel right. If it doesn't feel right, I'm not going to do it. We need our green space over here. And I just feel that Aurora absolutely should have their facility, no doubt about it, but not at 3306 <coughs> Seaman Avenue. And I cannot be convinced that there isn't any other, other parcel of land in this town that can appease them. I sat down with Oldman Delger a couple weeks ago, and he gave me some great, great proofs to, to why I should vote for this. And I was this close to going back to, uh, to changing my opinion, but I, I can't do it. I can't do it. After lots of thought and lots of agony and even some prayer, I've decided to vote against it, and I'm entrenched in that. No matter how anybody looks at this, and I've told this to many people, Field of Dreams people and, and non-constituents, this is about taking business away, bottom line, from St. Nicholas Hospital. You're oversaturating one area with so many medical facilities. They just happen to want their facility right across the street from their chief competitor. That's just a little bit too coincidental for Alderman Herman. If it hurts any of you that I vote against this, I'm sorry, but I, I have to do what I believe is right for me in here, and I will do what's right for the community. It's not a field of dreams issue. It's not an allure issue. It's what's best for the community. And Mark thinks what's best for the community is that Field of Dreams stays where it's at. Bottom line. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else? Uh, Alderman Heideman. Thank you. Uh, this information might have been given out in a packet, and I, I hate to go back to the, the two fields or the two, two soccer fields, but after these things are built, whose responsibility for maintaining this? Is this going back to the school district? Or are, is, okay. Don, you nodding your head, yes. Okay, so I hope, I hope they take a better care of it than they did the Field of Dreams. <coughs> Alderman Bitters. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with all due respect to my colleague, Mr. Herman, uh, who also represents my district, uh, 
you know, I actually grew up in Green Bay prior to moving to Sheboygan. And during the 70s and 80s, Bellin Memorial and St. Vincent Hospital were directly across the street from each other. I mean, they were as close as two hospitals could get. Uh, nothing I've heard in Aurora's uh, proposal has anything to do with taking business away from St. Nicholas. You know, they, they've always, uh, in years past, uh, cooperated with one another, uh, uh, trading emergency services back and forth. When one's out of room, go to the other one. You know, uh, you know the, there's a spirit of cooperation there. So I don't, I don't see this as this antagonistic, competitive uh, force that, that some of the people speaking tonight are trying to turn it into. I don't see it that way. Uh, in terms of how we develop uh, property, you know, oh, we have to put, uh, we can't have too many things in one place. This body approved a CVS pharmacy uh, kitty corner to an existing Walgreens right downtown. This is not a new <coughs> concept. And I'm, I'm a bit confused why this is suddenly a problem. Uh, in terms of the, the land use, uh, again, Alderman Herman uh, and, and I represent the same district. Uh, we're kind of unique in that none of Aurora's proposal affects our district. It, in fact, it happens all around us. <laughs> uh, but when I look at this in terms of the entire community, it, there are so many more positives than negatives. And I, I'm voting in support of this. You know, I, I, I respect Alderman Herman's opinion. I, you know, and I, I would encourage the rest of this body uh, to vote in favor of the rezoning. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Moving on to Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am also in this district with Alderman Van Akron, and this has clearly been the hardest decision I've had to face since I've been Alderman in seven years. Um, I'm struggling with the fact of my district versus the entire community. If this um, wasn't happening in my district, it would be an easy decision for me because I, deep down, I believe this is a good um, there's a lot of good that is going to come out of, would come out of this project. Um, like I said, I struggle with the fact that I do live in that district. I represent them. And I think that needs to come first. Um, I can also say that, lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, as you can see, this has been a struggle for me. I'm sorry. Um, it, it, it's, I'm gonna have to vote against the rezoning. And I'm very torn on it, but I do know that I need to represent the people that live around that area because that is my district. So. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Van, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've all had a chance to speak on this. We've heard a lot of information tonight and through the last several months of meetings now. Um, and I respect everybody's viewpoint on this. Everybody comes at this from a different, uh, from a different district, from a different viewpoint. Um, advantages, disadvantages. I, it, it is one of the, the topics that I think everyone in this room has spent the most time considering, weighing, and going over. Um, so I, I respect everybody's and applaud everybody's I guess, attention to details in this matter and really uh, a thoughtfulness in, in going, as we go through this matter. With that said, I have some questions, uh, and I guess I just want some clarification for uh, um, the council, the public, and everyone on TV. A petition was obviously submitted. I guess I would just like some clarification um, from the city attorney if that was found to be um, in proper format, what that requires, and how many um, yes votes then would be needed to pass this. City attorney? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, uh, 
neighbors around the Field of Dreams submitted two petitions. The first one, uh, uh, I had <coughs> provided an opinion to the city clerk, which I think had got disseminated to the council, and it was in the newspaper as well. Uh, <clears throat> in my opinion, did not meet the qualifications uh, as a valid protest petition that required 20% of the uh, uh, persons across immediately across the street, directly adjacent to uh, the rezoned facility within the city. Uh, about I think it was two weeks later, the uh, individual submitted a second petition that, in my opinion, did meet the requirements for a protest petition. I calculated that uh, they had had 36% uh, of the uh, uh, of the square footage of the area uh, of people signing the petition. Uh, the other issue I had with the first petition was that it was just it wasn't uh, duly acknowledged as the statute and our ordinance required. But I believe the uh, the second one that was submitted was. A, did qualify and so as a proper protest petition under our ordinance uh, what that triggers is a super majority vote on this uh, rezone it requires a three-quarter vote of the entire membership of the council which is 16 uh, alderman Matichek's vacant seat there counts in this case so uh, so 12 votes are needed uh, favorable to approve the rezone in this case does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you, sir. All right, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and forgive me if I don't have the right motion, but I'd like to uh, lay this on the table until the new council. Second. We have a motion on the floor to lay it on the table uh, until the new council is seated. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Carlson. Yeah, nothing else? Alderman Van Akron. I believe we already have a motion and a second to vote on this tonight, and I'd like to call the question on that vote. I believe that motion supersedes, doesn't it? The attorney? Yeah, the motion to table would supersede. Thank you. So the motion to table takes precedence, and it is debatable. Is there any other comments? <laughs> Alderman Boring. I'm not going to support the motion to table. I'm ready to vote on this tonight and let the chips fall where they may. Uh, I've had... Uh, Dozens of phone calls, emails, and voicemails, and uh, uh, I think a lot of us would like our lives to get back to normal again. Uh, I don't want this dragging on for another two or three weeks and rehashing the same things. We've had impassioned people speaking on both sides of the issue, and I think it's time to vote on it. I'm not going to support tabling it. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, May uh, Mr. Mayor. I think, I think we owe it to the city and the <laughs> residents of the Sheboygan to actually have a full body to take a, a vote on such an important matter. Thank you. Thank you for that <clears throat> comment. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to echo what uh, Alderman Boren had just said. We, we've spent a great deal of time on this, many meetings. Uh, we've spent three-plus hours debating this issue, having a public uh, hearing, listening session on this issue. Everybody here is here because today is that time to make that decision. The motions were made by our leadership to make that decision until we started getting up and talking about it. I think it's time we make that decision. Everybody here in this building is looking for a decision. This is our job. This is what we're elected to do. It's time that we just have this vote. And again, as Alderman Boren said, let the ship, ships fall where they may, and let's move on after with the rest of the agenda that we still have to go through tonight. It's our job to make these decisions, and, and tonight was the night to do that. Everybody showed up for that, and I think it's time that we get that done. Thank you for those comments. <laughs> Alderman Herman. Thank you. I concur with Alderman Board and Alderman Van Acker. We need to vote on this right away. The, the people of Field of Dreams need to know. Aurora needs to know. I don't think their nerves can take much more of this, and I don't think my nerves can take much more of this. <laughs> 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 now. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Boren? Uh, yes. Uh, when I said let the chips for, fall where they may, I didn't say how I was going to vote on this. I'm going to vote to approve the rezoning. But let's vote and let's get it over with. And as I said, let the chips fall where they may. But I am going to support the rezoning. Thank you. Any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to lay on the table until the new council is seated?
John? Uh, Got it. Uh, nine eyes, six no's. <coughs> Motion passes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is reports of Sorry, officers. Item 4.1 is an RO by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred. And uh, that item will lie over till April 20th. Hmm? Well, what's, what's the difference in the vote going to be? Somebody that. Uh, we're on item 4.1. That will lie over till April 20th, along with 4.2. Eldon replaces Ty, and I think Eldon's going to vote for it. Uh, item 4.3 through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. I don't think Bill's going to change his mind, and I don't think everybody else is. We're still meeting. So it's going to be another two weeks of, of this phone call. Number five is resolutions. Um, 5.1 will lie over. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 244 of 1415 by the city submitting various license applications and recommends that taxicab license number 0680 be denied based on the failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Victor Hugo Ramirez Jr. here? Um, I'm thinking that's a no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, the committee voted four to zero to deny the application. Thank you for that comment. <laughs> There's no other discussion. Will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <laughs> Taxi cab driver. I want to send that to the new council. We are doing that. Six two, six three, six four. Yeah. 15 eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Item 6.2 through 6.15 will be referred to various committees uh, of the new council. Uh, moving on to other matters. 8.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish an appropriation for boat facilities, winterization, be repaid to the capital projects from from the marina fund alderman hammond uh thank you mr mayor i move to suspend the rules second is there any objection to suspension seeing none please proceed uh I move to put the resolution upon its passage second thank you for that motion and support is there any discussion on the motion your honor just uh, another procedural point here <laughs> this is a budget alteration requires two-thirds vote that's 11 votes Thank you for that point. Alderman Boren. This is uh, $250,000 worth of damage. I'm sorry, I couldn't be at the last council meeting. This is $250,000 worth of damage that was done this past winter. Yes. And, and then the previous winter was at 400, over $400,000. 350, I, I believe, was the correct number. How are number. we coming on a long range solution to the damage down there? I know we, we had a meeting about it and we were thinking about building another retention wall or something and I know it's going to be very expensive but what is it now two years we got you know over a half a million dollars in repairs how are we coming Check, on that process? Pelichek is working on that I believe he can answer your question. What we decided is we needed to figure out what this problem was before we could come to a solution so uh, I wrote a grant in November to the Wisconsin Coastal Management to fund a study on wave mitigation study to understand what's <coughs> happening with the river flows and the southeast breezes coming in between the two breakwaters. We've been funded at $32,000. We'll get that money around June. Um, we were going to try to get some funding from the Corps to make up the difference. It's about an $80,000 study. 
Uh, we've been unsuccessful with that on their timeline is uh, late 2016, early 2017. So we're going to probably come back to the council sometime in June to make up the difference of about $48,000 and move that study forward this uh, spring, uh, f summer and fall with the hope of knowing by the time the winter season comes if there's any things we can do in the short term and what a long term fix would look like and what that would cost. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Julie? Got it. 14 eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole. To whom was referred a copy of the Charter Ordinance Number 1 of 1415 by Alderman Donahue, providing for the appointment of the City Attorney in lieu of the current method of election by the voters to such office. Recommends that the document be placed on file as it had already been acted on by the Council. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt a file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on that item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 8.3 will lie over. 8.4 would be referred to the Finance Committee. 8.5 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting applications for building contractor license already granted. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 8.6 through 8.9 will be referred to various committees. Item 9.2. Which one? 9.2. Is that other matters that we can act on now? Uh, 9.1. These are the ones Steve would read. Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you. 9.1 is an RO by the purchasing agent submitting a cost breakdown for professional consulting services related to the development of an urban forestry plan and planting site inventory, as well as planning related to the prevention of widespread damage to the onslaught of the Emerald Ash Borer in the city of Sheboy. That will be referred to Public Works. 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from Trayvon Poe requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1123 slant 1125 North 14th Street or 930A Michigan Avenue. Referred to Public Protection and Safety. 9.3 is another RO submitting communication from Angel Ramirez Sr. requesting a waiver to the sex offender residency restriction in order to live at 1123 slant 1125 North 14th Street or 930A Michigan Avenue. I refer to public protection and safety. 9.4 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for professional services related to urban forestry planning for the city of Sheboygan. Refer to public works. 9.5 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a notice of claim regarding Ricky Vandervart against the city of Sheboygan. It will be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.6 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a historical designation application Sheboygan Municipal Auditorium and Armory by Colin Catchell on March 31, 2015. That would be referred to the Historic Preservation Commission. 9.7 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That would be referred to Law and Licensing. 9.8 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting petitions to save the field of dreams. Oh, it's, uh, it's already been dealt with, I believe. No, no. What? we haven't dealt with it yet. So is that? This is a new uh, one we have to do something with. Submitting petitions to save Wait the field. Oh, this is a different <coughs> petition. Okay. I'd like to entertain a motion on that. File. Move to accept and file. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank, thank you. We have that on the floor. Any discussion? Third and fourth. <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of filing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Go ahead. 
9.9 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter an agreement with the State Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection for provision of weights and measures inspection services. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.10 is a resolution accepting 23000 in grant monies from the U.S. Bank Foundation for playground equipment at King Park. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.11 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget. Uh, Alder, that will go to the Finance Committee. 9.12 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Colin Catchell, President of the Armory Foundation, requesting that they be allowed to lease the Armory for a dollar for three years uh, and at the end of three years have an option to purchase the Armory for two dollars along with drawings that reflect the efficiency of space utilization that the Armory Foundation has designated for groups to pursue their passions and interests within the Sheboygan Armory. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, after almost four hours, I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you.